And that spirit that they had on them was a spirit of fear, was willing to obey every word that Yahweh said. And that's what allows us to do what is right, the fear. And we're going to right. show, these, show those things today. That is the fear that allows us to do these things. All the great men of Yahweh feared him, all of them. All the great men, if you read somebody about somebody in your Holy Scripture and he seems great unto you and the Almighty called him great, I guarantee he feared the Most High. You can't be great without it. So so when you say you fear the Most High, it's just like uh, this is my take on it. If, you, if, if I want to teach my children to fear the Most High, and I want to, based on what's going on in the world today, you got a whole lot of homosexuality. I have to teach them uh, the reason why this behavior is not acceptable because according to the words that's written, you know, you know in, in, in the law, they say that mankind should allow mankind. I would still have to teach them to, teach them, to them. They have asked me, Dad, why is, why is this behavior wrong? I have to go to that, that testimony to show it. Absolutely. We... Uh, our fathers were taught to fear Yahweh, and a lot of people overlook that. We reading like we professors, but the scripture tells us our fathers, all the great men and women of Israel, were taught the fear of Yahweh. So you have to teach them the fear of Yahweh, and how do you teach them the fear of Yahweh? You teach them what Yahweh said. And what he did not say. That's why we named the title today, Fear Yahweh and Depart from the Seven Things He Hate. Well, when we bring forth the seven things he hate, we're also going to be bringing forth the law. For these things that he hate is throughout the law. So we are crying out loud, telling the people to fear Yahweh and depart from evil. And in doing so, we are telling them at least seven of the evil things that he hates. And many of these things we do on a daily basis. So we didn't go deep into the book of the law to show all the things he hates. We picked the seven things that is listed in the book of wisdom to show that Israel should depart from those things. And those things, once we read them and study them, we find that those things are doing them, done among us each and every day. So we truly don't fear Yahweh, because if you did, you would depart from those things. That's all it is. And it's so simple that our adversaries are saying, that that's impossible. How are you going to fear uh, Yahweh and y'all don't even teach the law? And I don't know why one would say that. If anybody knew me, that's all I have ever taught was the law. I teach it as it is written, and then I tell Israel where, when, and why it was supposed to be done. So we teach the law. We just don't teach Israel to do the law because the Almighty told Israel where to do the law. That's right. So they trying to make it seem oh, okay. like... Oh, okay. I, I, I can see how they get it uh, misconstrued a little bit then because what, they, uh, uh, what, what many are thinking is that uh, we, we might be just we teaching that we can just live here, do whatever we want to do without any uh, uh, repercussion behind it, you know, so that... They are trying to make it seem like that we are teaching people we don't have to do anything, you know. Well, that, that, I mean, that, would, that, would, that, would, be a cop, that would be a cop out with all the presentations that we have. We, we've been, right. especially lately, uh, upon social media for the last five years is 54 weeks in a year. So we're giving at least 50 presentations a year, and all 50 denotes that our fathers broke the covenant. The covenant of the law is broken. We are here being punished. We have to be saved out of Jacob's troubles. That's that's us. That's what we teach. 
So today being in under the curses and in another man's land, you are judged by the rod of man and by the stripes of sons of men. So you don't have to come out and confess your sins to me or confess your uh, wrongdoings to me. You know what you have done wrong. And many times you know when that punishment have came towards you for what you have done wrong. So you're going to be punished. Nobody goes unpunished. That's why we're going to be saved. What are we being saved out of? The punishment. We're not being saved out of righteousness. We're not being saved out of keeping the Sabbath. We're going to be saved from the punishment that has befallen us. Right. And we don't tell nobody. We don't tell nobody to do evil. Matter of fact, our cry speaks against that, for we teach fear Yahweh and depart from evil. If we tell our brothers and sisters to depart from evil, how can somebody come back and tell us, well, y'all just do whatever y'all want to do. Y'all allow people to do evil. We don't tell nobody to do evil. We tell people to depart from evil. And we allow them to have a major factor to make them depart, and that is none other than the fear. If you truly fear Yahweh, you will stop doing whatever is evil. And we have many witnesses, many people in the listening audience that can testify this truth. Once you feared him, you stopped. Once you feared that he might do something to you or your children and things like that, that's when you stopped it. You didn't just walk around and say, I'm not going to do this no more. You did it based on the consciousness of fear of what you have heard your creator say. And what he can do. Yeah, knowing what he can do. And that's where the fear initially come in. That's why we are chosen. We see what he can do. That's why we both to fear him. We've seen it with our own eyes. When I say we, I'm talking about our fathers. Seen it with their own eyes. And I, excuse, excuse me, this, uh, Shalom, this is Brother Yamin of Cincinnati. I, uh, I've had conversations with people that we that, that kind of drug out a little bit because they said, that, okay, with you fearing Yahweh and departing from evil, you basically keeping the commandment. And <laughs> that's what they try to tell well, and I have brought that up several times, and that really denotes that we don't keep because they even see it. Well, for them to say fear Yahweh and depart from evil, and they have vouched not to do anything that Yahweh consider evil, then they're keeping the law. No, we're not. We are showing our integrity and fearing Yahweh. And in the same, with the same breath, we are witnessing that we are not under the covenant of the law. That's a difference. That's a difference. Right. But we're never going to teach not to honor our mother and father. We're never going to teach to serve wood and stone. We're never going to teach to take Yahweh's name in vain. We're never going to exactly. teach uh, 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 not to keep the Sabbath day in the time, in the place that is appointed. And just like a, like one of the our adversaries keep on saying, well, y'all saying that uh, the Sabbath is no more. I have never said that. I said the Sabbath is forever. You just ain't under it. See, it's a difference. So with them not understanding what we're saying, they twisting what we're saying and making up something of their own. I have taught over and over again, dealing with the Sabbath, how great it is, how Yahweh has implemented the Sabbath in creation, and when it was made known to the children of Israel. Well, the children of Israel broke the covenant, and we have words dealing with the breaking of the covenant, dealing with the Sabbath. And it told us mm -hmm. that we will find ourselves in the enemy's land while the land enjoys Sabbath. There is no way in the world that you are under the Sabbath. The Sabbath is every seventh day. You are just not under it, and that's what we teach. So 
So you got to listen to these men and women out here because they're saying they're putting a lot of words in our mouths, and that is not what we have taught, nor is that what we have on record. And that's what's so great about these presentations. They are records. You can always go back and find out what we have taught. Oh, yeah. and, you're, and you're dead right, brother, y'all, man. All, that, all they are saying is that their understanding is telling them that we are keeping the law. In all actuality, we are in the sense of departing from evil, but not in the sense of the covenant of the law. And one might say, why not? And the main reason is because it is broken. It says in yep. Jeremiah 31, a new covenant will be made. In Ezekiel, the 20th chapter, it says that we will bring them under the bond of a covenant. So until those things transpire, you are not under the covenant of the law. That's right. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'll try to make this short. Um, we done did several presentations on fear Yahweh and depart from evil. Again, today's presentation will be called fear Yahweh and depart from the seven things he hates, which we will show forth from the book of wisdom <coughs> to, uh, throughout this presentation. But right now, we got Brother Yamin that's going to read Psalm 76 and Psalms 111 for us all. <clears throat> and then we'll get into this great presentation and reprove our brothers and sisters once again. You got the floor, brother. Shalom, everybody. My brothers and sisters, I'd like everyone to turn to Psalms 76, as my brother stated. That's Psalms 76. Thing, brother, you got me. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Oh, sorry about that. I had everybody on mute. Uh, I would like everyone to turn to Psalm 76, please. To Psalm 76. He reads, and Yehuda Elohim is known. His name is great in Israel. In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. There break he the arrows of the bow, the shield and the sword and the battle, Selah. Thou art more glorious and excellent than the mountains of prey. The stout-hearted are spoiled. They have slept their sleep. And none of the men of might 
have found their hands. At thy rebuke, O Elohim of Yahakob, both the chariot and horse are cast into the deep sleep, into a deep sleep. Thou, even thou, art to be feared, and who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. When Elohim arose the judgment to save all the meek of the earth, Selah, surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. The remainder of wrath shalt thou restrain. Vow and pay unto Yahweh your Elohim. Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. He shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. Hallelujah. I would like everyone to turn to Psalms 111, please. That's Psalms 111. It reads, Hallelujah, I will praise Yahweh with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of Yahweh are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. Yahweh is gracious and full of compassion. He has given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has shewed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandment. His praise endureth forever. Hallelujah! 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 And Shalom Israel. First and foremost, I would like to give thanks and praise to the one whose name is holy and reverent, which is none other than Yahweh, the creator of the heaven and earth and everything therein is. And I would like to also greet the listening audience by saying shalom. Today's presentation will be called Fear Yahweh and depart from the seven things he hates. And we will use this presentation as we have used all of our presentations to show the fear of Yahweh and to ask his children to depart from evil and to also show that our fathers have broken the covenant of the law Thus, we find our teeth set on edge, being recipients of the curses, and we need to be saved out of Jacob's troubles. So our presentation denotes those facts, as this presentation 
will also denote. And as our brother just read in Psalms 111, it, tell, it tells us again in the last two verses, he sent redemption, salvation into his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. Well, this reverence represents fear. And you can find the definition of fear in your Hebrew concordance under 3374. That way we can understand what does it mean to fear. And what we just read was holy and reverent, which you can also find in your Hebrew concordance, the term reverent, under 3372. And they both denotes fear. This reverence is known as a clean fear, one that one also displays toward their mother and their father. For as we will see in this presentation, Israel was not just commanded to fear the Creator of the heaven and earth, but they were also commanded to fear their father and their mother, which denotes a clean fear, as this word reverence defines. And again, you can find this definition in your Hebrew concordance under 3372, and that's a Strong's concordance. It reads, in the 10th verse, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. And I ponder on this all the time, especially when I hear my brothers and sisters speak as if they truly have sound understanding. But they don't because it is displayed in their lack of fear. Many people believe, even the Christians, brothers and sisters believe, that there should be no need for fear, for Yahweh is nothing but love. And you don't love or you don't fear love. And that comes from one that have not truly read nor confirmed every word of our Creator. For the Almighty allows us to know in the book of wisdom that there is a time for everything under the sun. Thus, there is a time to fear. And we should fear our Creator each and every day for what he has said and for what he has done. Thus, let us start this great presentation out by turning our Holy Scriptures to the book of wisdom, the book of Proverbs. And I would like to read the first words of wisdom. And let's see by reading the first words of wisdom, if it's necessary or not to fear Yahweh. For it tells us in Proverbs, the first chapter, if we all turn there, please. And please, at this time, if you, not, if you have not already, get yourself a Holy Scripture, a pen, and a piece of paper. 
that ye may jot down these most relevant scriptures that we will bring forth this day. For the scripture tells us, if thy be wise, thou should be wise for thyself. So please have your scripture, your pen, and your paper at hand. It tells us, Israel, in Proverbs, the first chapter. And I'll start at the very first verse. And we're going to read to the seventh verse. And it reads, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. So these words are coming from the king of Israel, from a seed that Yahweh promised David that he would have to sit upon the throne. And look at the great wisdom that Yahweh implanted into this man. And it reads, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. So we got in this first, in the second verse, we have wisdom, instruction, And understanding. The third verse reads, To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtility to the simple, to the young men knowledge, and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall obtain into wise counselors. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise, and their dark sayings. So it's allowing us to know all these things that is used and that is known as intelligence, that is known as wisdom, understanding and knowledge that is known as judgment and justice and equality allows us to know and based on the interpretation of the dark sayings it allows us to know in the seventh verse the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of all of this. If you want to have the knowledge and the interpretation of the dark sayings, of knowledge, of wisdom, of instruction, of justice, of judgment, of equality, it tells us in the seventh verse, The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of the knowledge. So to have the knowledge of any of these great attributes, it must come by way of the fear of Yahweh. But we got people teaching 
in so many words that the fear of Yahweh is nothing. If you ain't teaching the judgment, if you ain't teaching the justice, if you ain't teaching the equality, if you ain't teaching the instructions, Fearing Yahweh is nothing. But the king who Yahweh implanted this such great knowledge and fear into told anyone that reads the words of wisdom that the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of the knowledge of all these things. And that's probably why they don't find themselves knowledgeable. And that's probably why they don't find themselves with sound wisdom. Because they do not understand that the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of the knowledge of all these great attributes. For it reads one more time in the seventh verse, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge, but food. And who is a fool? What is a fool opposite to? And is none other than wisdom. So they truly don't have the wisdom. And Yahweh allow us to know that they don't have the wisdom by calling them fools. And what is it? that the fool despise? What is it that allows us to know that you are a fool? It reads, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And our fathers, in their dying days, in their in time, they were labeled as fools, according to Leviticus, the 26th chapter, because they despised the statue. They abhorred the judgment. So a fool is one that despised wisdom, and instructions as our fathers were labeled. It also tells us, if we take a look at the second chapter of Proverbs, and let's read the first five verses. For it tells us in the first five verses, of second chapter of Proverbs, my son, if I will receive my words, and you can't receive them and despise them at the same time. You're either doing one or the other. My son, if I will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thy incline thy ear into wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. It tells us, yea, if thy criest after knowledge and lifteth up thy voice for understanding, if thy seek is her as silver, and searches for her as for hidden treasures, then, for there is a time for everything under the sun, and according to the instructions, it says, then 
shall thy understand the fear of Yahweh. It didn't say if you keep and teach all the laws and statutes and judgments and commandments, then you will understand the fear of Yahweh. But instead, the son is warned to receive the father's words and hide his commandments with him. It says to incline thy ear into wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. It says criest after knowledge and lift thy voice for understanding. It says to his son seek wisdom and understanding as silver. And then it reads, Then shall thy understand the fear of Yahweh. And find, not only will you understand, but note what you will find once you understand the fear of Yahweh. It tells us you will find the knowledge of Elohim. Well, what is the knowledge of Elohim? Is not the knowledge of Elohim the voice, the word, the laws, the statutes, the commandments, the ordinances, the testimonies, the judgments? Is that not the knowledge of of your creator? Absolutely. Well, look what you have to do to get it. These are not my words. These are the words of your creator coming out of the promised king mouth. And it allows us to know that you must fear Yahweh, to understand and to find the knowledge of Elohim. And many of our people don't understand today when it comes to the knowledge of Elohim because they do not have the fear. It took me a long time to come to this conclusion because I was giving my brothers and sisters the benefit of the doubt, not knowing what was in their heart and in their minds. But as I continued to study and look and hear what my brothers and sisters have done and said, I have come to this conclusion that many of the people that call themselves Israel truly don't have the knowledge of their Elohim nor the fear of Yahweh. Thus, it tells us in the third chapter of Proverbs, if we read the first seven verses, I'll just pick up, now let's start at the first seven verses. Let's read the first seven verses. Because these first seven verses denote all that I have stated so far and all that we have found in Proverbs 1. For it tells us in Proverbs 3, the very first verse, My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart Keep my commandments. And mind you, when I read, I denoted it earlier, but I want to make sure you understand these words. When I read the book of Proverbs, many times when it says, my son, 
the son is the son of King David. And times when Solomon is speaking, it is speaking to his sons. For we read in Proverbs, the first chapter, the first verse, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David. So it allows us to know who Proverbs it is. It allows us to know who his father is, and then it lets us know that Solomon is the king of Israel. That is told to us in the very first verse. Then we read, and we read in the second chapter, the first verse, my son, this is Solomon speaking. If I will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. Well, now we find in the third chapter, the very first verse, and it reads, and give more advice. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments for length of days. And long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them on the table of thy heart. So shall thy find favor and good understanding. In the sight of Elohim and man. And we read to find this good understanding and to find this great knowledge of Elohim, you must possess fear. For it tells us in the fifth verse, trust in Yahweh with all thy heart. And lean not into thy own understanding. It tells us, Israel, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he, the creator, shall direct thy paths. Be not wise. In thy own eyes, fear Yahweh. So, to teach the law without the fear of Yahweh is being right in your own eyes. It told us, be not wise. In thy own eyes. Fear Yahweh. So if you were already fear Yahweh, it would not read, be not wise in thy own eyes. Because you wouldn't be wise in your own eyes. You would be wise in the eyes of Yahweh. And not just in the eyes of Yahweh, but in the eyes of man. But not so today. We're not seeing a bunch of people wise in the eyes of Yahweh, nor in the eyes of man. And why not? Because they do not fear Yahweh. And they have not a vouch to depart from evil. It tells us if we all turn our holy scriptures to the book of Job. Let us turn our scriptures to the book of Job. And it tells us in the book of Job, the very first chapter. And it reads in Job, the first chapter. The very first verse in this wise. There 
was a man in the land of Oz. And this land of Oz is the same land that our great father Abraham came out of. For Yahweh came to Abraham and told Abraham to follow me. And he took Abraham out of the land of Ur of the Chaldees. And let me make sure that it's the exact same name. Yes, it is. No, it's not. This one here is, no, it's not. This one here is the land of Uz, which denoted where many of the uh, uh, Edomites lived. It was close to the Euphrates River. It was close to the Chaldees, the Sabaeans and the Chaldees. But I misquoted that name. This would place Uz near the modern-day boundary between the countries of Iraq and Saudi Arabia. So that's where, where Job lived. Abraham lived in Ur, not Oz, but Ur, you, you are, of the Chaldees. So let's keep going where we were at. Job one and one, and it says again, there was a man in the land in the land of you whose who name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared Elohim. And I wonder did this fear of Elohim make this man perfect and upright. For it reads, and one that feared Elohim and is shrewd, hated, departed from evil. It also tells us in the second chapter of Job, if we take a look at the first ten verses, Job, the second chapter, and it reads, again, once we heard that there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared Elohim and a shrewd evil, it says, again, there was a day. When the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Yahweh, and Satan, the adversary, came also among them to present himself before Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto Satan, From whence came thy? And Satan answered, Yahweh, and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Hast I considered my servant Job? So note that it is asked of Satan, has thy considered my servant Job? Even though Job is not under the covenant of the law this day, Yahweh is calling him his servant. Could the fear of Yahweh and the departing of evil make Job Yahweh's servant? He's not of the seed of Abraham or at least the seed of Israel. But he is called Yahweh's servant. And his name was Job. 
that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fear Elohim and eschews evil. And still he holds fast his integrity. And that's what I stated today to Brother Cephas, dealing with one telling us if we are under the covenant of the law or not. And when we say, fear Yahweh and depart from evil, many people look at that as if we are keeping the covenant of the law. But your brother has explained it over and over again. And it is called the same word that is used in this third verse. And that word is none other than his integrity. Although thy move me against him. So even though the adversary has been moved against us, even though we are here in another man's land being afflicted and judged, by the rod of man and by the stripes of men, we still, we that fear Yahweh, we that confirm every word, we that witness for our Creator, we still hold fast to our integrity. Thus, we will honor our father and our mother. We will not eat anything unclean. We will not lay with our neighbor's wife. We will not shed innocent blood, not because we are under the covenant of the law, but because we fear Yahweh and we use our integrity to depart from evil. Did you hear that, Israel? As you see, this perfect man is doing this day. For it reads again in the third verse, And Yahweh said unto Satan, Has I considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man? So y'all no longer let your brothers and sisters deceive you and tell you that you can't be perfect. Because you can be perfect. Perfect, all it means is that you hit the mark. Sin denotes you missed the mark. So long as you hit the mark, you are perfect. Long as you are in total obedience with the Creator, you are perfect. And the only way you're going to be in total obedience with the creator of the heaven and earth, you must fear him. For it tells us a perfect and upright man, one that fear Elohim is true evil, and still he holds fast his integrity. Although thou hast moved me against him, to destroy him without cause. Well, your brother teach that Israel, the children of Israel, teeth are set on edge. And their teeth being set on edge is not based on their cause. It is based on their fathers eating of the sour grapes. So when you read this and relate it to our situation, it sounds similar because Satan, the adversary, was used against you. And the Almighty looked upon your integrity. And he looked to see how many of you 
truly feared him in the earth. And the ones that did was known as being perfect. Even in the times of trials and tribulations. So you want to be like Job? You want to be like Daniel? Then fear Yahweh and depart from evil. It continues to tell us. And Satan answered Yahweh and said, skin for skin. Yea, all that a man have will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now and touch his bones and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And many have done these things. And Yahweh said it to Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand. Meaning, you are allowed to take him through trials and tribulations. You are allowed to try to do whatever you can to prove that this man do not fear me and that he do not eschew evil. Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life, meaning you do not have the power to take his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of Yahweh and smote Job with sore balls from the sole of his foot to his crown of his head. And he took him a pot shear to scrape himself with him. And he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Does thy still to please take no? They ain't under the covenant of the law, but it's something else that's causing them to fear Elohim and to depart from evil. And it's something in you. It's supposed to be found in your heart. And it is what? This lady, his wife, just said, as we have already read, for it reads again in the ninth verse, then said his wife unto him, Does thy still retain thy integrity? Curse Elohim and die. Why suffer like that? You mean you have that much fear in Yahweh? to where you will endure all of these trials and tribulations instead of cursing Elohim and die. Well, many of us don't have that type of integrity. Many of us have cursed the Almighty Name, and many of us have died, and many of us is going to die. But the Almighty allowing us to know in wisdom and the fear of Yahweh, there is safety. There is length of days. There is protection from the creator of the heaven and earth. You just got to continue in your integrity, even though the time and place is hard. Even though the time and place is so corrupt that you just feel like giving up. And that's what the adversary hopes in. But we that fear Yahweh and depart from evil will continue on in our integrity. That we will not curse our Elohim nor God. Because we will witness 
the truth. We will let the world know today by the fear of Yahweh, iniquity is purged. Not by you reenacting something that's supposed to be done in the land of promise, but by the fear of Yahweh, your iniquity will be forgiven. It continues to tell us, if we take a look in the third, excuse me, did I read to the 10th verse? Yes, I did. Let us go to the 28th chapter of Job. So it allows us to know that Job was not under the covenant of the law that was given to the children of Israel to be exercised in the land of promise. But he was known as a servant of Yahweh, a man that feared Yahweh in a shrewd evil. And the Almighty allowed the adversary to prove him. And he was tested, and he found to be faithful. Thus, it tells us in the 28th chapter, the 28th verse of Job, and it reads in this wise. And, and to man. He said, Behold, the fear of Yahweh, that is wisdom. Well, hold on, because I saw we read something like that in the book of Proverbs, where it told us that the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. The knowledge and wisdom of all the things we read in the first six verses of Proverbs 1. And then we find out that there was a man in the earth by the name of Job that feared Elohim and departed from Evel. And this man feared. And this man departing from Evel was tested by the number one adversary, and he was found faithful. Thus it reads in Job 28 and 28, and to man, he said, and this man is Adam, not just Israel. This man is Adam. Humankind, and into man, he said, and we know that to be true based on what was said in the very first verse, that there was not another man on the earth like Job. So this man is Adam, all men, just like the animals, to fear Yahweh. And into man, he said, Behold, the fear of Yahweh. That is wisdom. You want to be smart? You want to let us know you know this book? Then fear your creator. Let us hear out your mouth on a daily. Fear Yahweh. And depart from evil, and you will allow us to know that you are truly wise. For it tells us one more time in closing, and unto the man he said, Behold, the fear of Yahweh, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is what? Understand. It also tells us, Israel, if we turn our scriptures to the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis, 
and we're going to the 6th chapter, the 6th chapter of Genesis, and I would like to read the first nine verses to give us an idea of what it means to fear Yahweh and what it means to depart from evil. And how is it that with this great big earth that we find so few people fearing Yahweh and departing from evil? For it tells us in Genesis, the sixth chapter, if we pick up at the very first verse, and it reads, dealing with Adam, dealing with mankind, as we are dealing with this day. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them that the sons of Elohim saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, beautiful, and they took them wives of all which they choose. And Yahweh said, please take note, and I am showing this to also allow us to know that this fear, just like this knowledge, just like this wisdom, is a spirit. The Almighty is the controller of all spirits. He is the one that allows you to have the spirit to fear him. The scripture told us in the wilderness, when Yahweh gave the children of Israel the covenant of the law, all the people heard his voice. All the people saw the lightning and the thunder. All the people heard the noise. But it also tells us that there was two people that had a different spirit. And those two people was Caleb and Joshua. And having that spirit a fear on them allowed them to make it in the land of promise. Those that did not have that fear died in the wilderness. So it is a spirit that is given to us to fear Yahweh. And when that spirit is given to you, you are not to neglect it nor reject it. For if you do, you will become a fool. You will become one that despises instruction. Thus it tells us in the third verse, and Yahweh said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, we are made up of flesh and spirit. Once the spirit is taken away, the flesh is dead. Thus it reads, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of Elohim came in into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown, great names, great reputations. And Elohim saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continuously. And we know that to be true for 
the Almighty allows us to know, dealing with wisdom, trust in Yahweh with all thy heart, and lean not into thy own understanding. Well, according to this fifth verse, every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually because they did not have the fear of Yahweh in their hearts, nor was they departing from evil. And it repented Yahweh that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And Yahweh said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I made them. But Noah, another man, found on the earth that feared Yahweh and his shrewd evil. But Noah found grace, favor, mercy in the eyes of Yahweh. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation. But he wasn't the only man in the generation. But he was the man that stand fast with the spirit that was upon him to allow him to fear Yahweh and depart from evil, even his own imaginations. Thus, he was a just man and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with Elohim. And this walking with Elohim denotes that Noah was on the path of every word that came out of the mouth of Yahweh. Everything he said he did, he believed. Thus, we read, Noah walked with Elohim. There was another great man that walked with Elohim. And it denotes the fear. It denotes him departing from evil. Because if not, you would not even be in the presence of Elohim. Thus, it tells us, I'm kind of skipping over my notes, but it tells us if we take a quick look in the fifth chapter of Genesis. And it tells us in the fifth chapter of Genesis, in the 22nd verse, and it reads in Genesis 5 and 22, and all the days of Enoch, excuse me, and Enoch walked with Elohim, as we just read about Noah. It's a great thing to walk with Elohim, because if you walk with Elohim, you fear Elohim, and you depart from evil. Thus it tells us, and Enoch walked with Elohim after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. 
and Enoch walked with Elohim, and he was not, for Elohim took him. So allow us to know it's a great thing to fear Yahweh and to depart from evil, to be walking with your creator. It also tells us, if we take a look, in the fourth verse, or the fourth chapter of Genesis, the fourth chapter of Genesis, for the fourth chapter of Genesis tells us this, and this is for all mankind. This is for Adam. And I am talking to Adam today. Even though Israel is in the midst of Adam, I am speaking to Adam. These words, fear Yahweh and depart from evil, is good for any Adam or any humankind. Thus it reads in Genesis, the fourth chapter, and I will pick up at the third verse, for it allows us to know what was the thought on the earth at this time working our way up to where the earth was destroyed because of the evil imaginations of man, which we just read about in the sixth chapter. Well, here it tells us in Genesis, the fourth chapter, the third verse, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering into Yahweh. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And Yahweh had respect into Abel and to his offering. But into Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance filled. And Yahweh said unto Cain, Why art thy wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? Let me expound on this a little bit before I read the next two verses. I use this as an example of us being here today. And in this funky situation, we have a, a opportunity in the process of time to offer that which is right into Elohim today. And some of us are Cain. And some of us are able. And those that are able, Yahweh accept their offering. And the offering that is accepted is to fear Yahweh and depart from evil. evil. And then we have our brothers and sisters that denotes Cain and his offering, which was not accepted by Yahweh. And I label Cain offering as being right in your own eyes. I denote Cain offering as being every man right according to his own imagination, and they have done evil continuously. 
Thus, it tells us for those that's in the corner of Cain and those that's in the corner of Abel. For it tells us in the seventh verse, and this is not just for Israel, but this is for Adam, for all mankind. If thy does well, shall thy not be accepted? So he's allowing us to know Cain is not accepted. His offering is not accepted. And I related it to being right in your own eyes or being or everyone being right in the imagination of their own evil heart. Abel offering denoted fearing Yahweh and departing from evil. And Yahweh said unto Cain in the sixth verse, Why art thy wrath? And why is thy confidence fallen in the earth? If thy does well, and what do well denote based on this presentation? Fearing Yahweh and departing from the seven things he hate. It reads in the seventh verse, If thy does well, Thy shall not die. If thy does well, shall thy not be accepted? And that's a question that should be answered from us that fear Yahweh and have departed from evil. If thy does well, shall thy not be accepted? And the answer is yes, based upon the facts and the truth that we have brought forth thus far. Enoch did well, Job did well, Abraham did well. If thy does well, shall thy not be accepted? And the answer is, you shall. And if thy does not well, if you don't fear Yahweh, if you refuse to depart from evil, well, sin lies at the door. And unto thee, those that don't fear Yahweh and refuse to depart from evil, unto thee shall be his desire. And thy shall rule over him. So it allows us to know that the almighty voice have always been in the earth. And it has always been wisdom and the knowledge of Elohim to fear him. Thus, it tells us, if we take a look, Let's go to Genesis, the 22nd chapter. Genesis, the 22nd chapter. And we know that, which I didn't read it, but I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. In Genesis, the 15th chapter, the 6th verse, lets us know that Yahweh accepted Abraham. And also the 17th chapter, the first verse, and that denotes Abraham being perfect. And with our brothers and sisters that do not teach fear Yahweh and depart from evil, with them not having sound wisdom, they teach that you cannot fear Yahweh and depart from evil without knowing the law. And they teach 
that the laws have always been given way before the covenant of the law was given to our father Israel. And they teach that Abraham was under that covenant of the law. So I would like to go to Genesis, the 22nd chapter, to show Abraham's fear and to show toward Yahweh and to show Abraham his shrewdness against evil and to show what laws, commandment, statute, judgment, ordinance that Abraham kept that we will read about in the 26th chapter of Genesis. But let's read this 22nd chapter first because I don't think many Israelites have read it, especially those that bring up Genesis 26 verse 1 to 5 and say Abraham was under the covenant of the law. So let's start this investigation on fearing Yahweh and departing of evil in the realm of Abraham in Genesis, the 22nd chapter. And it tells us in Genesis, the 22nd chapter, in the very first verse, and it reads, And it came to pass after these things that Elohim did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and tempt, nope, he said tempt, tried him, just like he did with Job. It says, tempt Elohim, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, behold, here I am. So the first uh, sign of fear was his response. We call to many brothers and sisters, and none of them are saying, here I am. But instead, they are saying we are in error for teaching the world to fear Yahweh and to depart from evil. Thus, it reads in the second verse of Genesis, the 22nd chapter, and he said, take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Marar, 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 and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him Isaac his son and cleaved the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of the which Elohim had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again unto you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire this is one second and he took the fire in his hand and a knife you hear me And a knife, and they went both of them together. 
And Isaac speak unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire in the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, Elohim will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which Elohim told him of. And Abraham built an altar there. He's doing everything that Yahweh telling him. And laid the wood in order. And bound Isaac his son. And laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand. He doing everything that Yahweh said. Because he feared him. It says... And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And this is a great test to, 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 to have using your own child. Many of you would have failed. Many of you would have never even attempted. And we know that to be true based on what you let your children do today. And how you have raised them today. But it tells us. And Abraham stretched forth his hand. And took the knife to slay his son. In the name of Yahweh. Because Yahweh said it. 11 verse reads. And the angel of Yahweh called unto him out of heaven. And said. Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thy anything unto him. For I, for now I know, look what the angel, we done heard the words, of the anointed, we done heard the words of Noah, we done heard the words of Job, now we're hearing the words of the angel that Yahweh has sent, and it reads again in the 12th verse, and he said, lay not thy hand upon the lamb, neither do thy anything unto him, for now. Look what's making him great. Look what's giving him that name. Look what's making him perfect. Look what uh, uh, he has done for, for what is rendered in Genesis, the 26th chapter, about this great man. For we hear and see with our own eyes. It reads, for now I know that thy what? Fierce. Elohim. And how do you know that? Seeing thy has not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And as your brother loved to teach, some people think life is everything. I teach it. Yahweh loving kindness is greater than life, for it is written. And that Loving kindness is about to be extended into Abraham because he was willing to give his, his son's life up in obedience. And the Almighty said, it was just a test, son, and you have passed. And how did he pass? Because he feared Elohim. And that is the beginning of knowledge and instruction. So to be obedient in this instruction, you got to fear him or you would have never did it. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thy anything unto him. For now I know that thy fears 
Elohim. Seem thou has not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And then it reads, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a ticket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Yahweh Jur, as it is said to this day. And the mount of Yahweh, it shall be seen. And the angel of Yahweh called unto Abram, Abraham out of the heaven and the second time and look what he said and said by myself have I sworn said Yahweh for because thou has done this thing and has not withheld thy son thy only son that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed. And this is the reward for keeping the commandment. This is the reward for keeping the statute. This is the reward for keeping the judgment. This is the reward for uh, observing. All that he told him. And these are the same rewards when Israel is under the covenant of the law in obedience. These same words also befalls them. But I am showing these words befalling our father, Abraham, before the covenant of the law was given to his seed, the Israelites. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand that is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Why? Because thou hast what? Obey my voice. I want to stop right here and let's go straight to Genesis, the 26th chapter. Because many people don't fear Yahweh, nor have they avouched to depart from evil. And we find that the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. So when it comes to this Holy Scripture, they don't have much knowledge because they have not did the principal thing, which is to fear Yahweh. So they have came to this chapter and read a few of these verses and have proclaimed that Yahweh had been gave the covenant of the law to Abraham, and if not, what do this fifth verse mean? Well, if we have been paying attention to all that we have brought forth this day, we should easily know what this fifth verse means in the 26th chapter of Genesis. For we just read it. But let's read it again, and let's start in Genesis, the 26th chapter, the very first verse. And this coincides with what we just read in the 22nd verse. And it reads, And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went into Amalek, king of the Philistines, and to Gur. And Yahweh appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee, and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries, 
and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed a to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give into thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Why? And it reads, because that Abraham obeyed my voice. Let's stop. Because people that don't fear Yahweh and don't have knowledge of the holy are saying that Abraham was under the covenant of the law. If not, Genesis 26 and 5 would not be in here. And that is absolutely incorrect. You just lack the fear of Yahweh thus you lacking the knowledge of the holy. It told us in Genesis, the 26th chapter, the 5th verse, because that Abraham obeyed my voice. Well, let's stop. And let's go right back to Genesis, the 22nd chapter. And please look what it says in the 16th and 18th verse. And it tells us again, if we have forgotten that quick, it reads in the 16th verse, and he said, and he said, by myself have I sworn, said Yahweh, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son. One more place I'm looking for where it says, because thou have heard or listened to my voice. That's what I'm looking for. What verse was that? saying the same thing, there it is, sorry about that, it's the 18th verse, the 18th verse of the 22nd chapter of Genesis, it's the saying the exact same thing that we just read in the 26th chapter, the 5th verse, here it reads, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou has obeyed my voice. And if you look back from the 22nd chapter on back to the 12th chapter, you will find no commands that Yahweh gave except the circumcision. And that is a command. They, the circumcision do have statutes, and he did them. So here we read, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. And we turn back to the 26th chapter of Genesis, the fifth verse, it reads, because that Abraham obeyed my voice. So all you got to do, from this 26th chapter back to the 12th chapter, because the 12th chapter is where Abraham is, is uh introduced, if you look from the 12th chapter to the 26th chapter, all you got to do is look all that Abraham did, and all that Abraham did denotes the 5th chapter of, I mean, the 5th verse of the 26th chapter. And we started off proving this point by showing what Yahweh said in Genesis, the 26th chapter, the fifth verse. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. That's the very first thing Yahweh said. The second thing says, and kept my charge. If Yahweh charged him to circumcise all the males, in his house, and he did it, he did it. If the Almighty charged uh, Abraham to bring a sacrifice at a certain time in a certain place, he did it. 
That's his charge. And the things that you did in that sacrifice or preparing for that offering is called statues. And they are also noted as the law. So when you read in this fifth verse, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws, that's why Isaac was a recipient of the same blessing because of what your daddy did. And it does not denote the covenant of the law. It also tells us, Israel, and I just wanted to get that out because so many people misrepresent Genesis 26. When uh, they bring forth the fifth verse, many of our brothers and sisters are stuck because they don't truly know and have the knowledge of the holy. They don't truly fear Yahweh to where Yahweh got that spirit upon them to where they can perceive his wisdom. So it was mandatory that we at least expound on it. It also tells us to show an example of fear in the earth and the reward thereof. If we take a look at the 20th chapter of Genesis, and then we'll step out the first book. But we used a lot of the first book to establish that Yahweh always wanted Adam to fear him and depart from evil. And again, Israel, Adam is denoted as mankind. Genesis, the 20th chapter, tells us, I'll pick up. I'll start at the very first verse, Genesis, the 20th chapter. And I am using this as a testimony and as a proof to my presentation that fearing Yahweh and departing from evil is the wisest thing that any man, I said any man, can tell his brother and sister. So I'm using this presentation to show that truth with Abraham and with a totally different man and nation. For it tells us in the very first verse, and Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelt between Kadesh and Sur and Sojourn and Gur. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And, Ab and Amalek, king of Gur, sent and took Sarah. But Elohim came to Amalek in a dream by night and said unto him, Behold, thy art but a dead man. For the woman which thy has taken for she is a man's wife. But Amalek had not come near her. So he ain't violated yet. He violated as far as taking her, but he ain't violated as far as going into her yet. And he said, Master, will thou slay also a righteous nation? Please take note of what being said. Say he not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. And Elohim said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thy did this in the integrity of thy heart. 
for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. So he would have sinned against Yahweh if he would have went into that woman which was there. We must remember, many people speak about the all law. The all law denotes the voice of Yahweh, what came out of his mouth, not just to the children of Israel, but to Adam, to humankind. And if he said, he that shed blood, his blood should be shed, I don't care if you're Israelite or Indian. That's what he means. And that is for mankind. So the righteous Elohim that created all already had righteousness on the earth, not in the form of a covenant of a law, but righteousness was already in the earth because the righteous one created the earth. And all that man had to do is walk in the righteous one path. And you will be right. So there has always been righteousness in the earth. The covenant that was given to the children of Israel is not the first covenant on the face of the earth. All you got to do is look at the other nations and find their laws. You can find when they were first given to them, how long they've been doing them, what's their name, and all of them. I don't have all that information right before my face. I might can pull up some of that information during the Q&A. But all the nations had laws. And most of all the nation laws came by way of the creator of the heaven and earth, what he desired. Man began, as we read in the sixth chapter of Genesis, began to lean upon their own imagination. And when they did that, they left the path of righteousness. Then there is sin. Thus it reads. In the sixth verse of the 20th chapter of Genesis, and Elohim said it to him in a dream. Yea, I know that thy did this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore, but I can't even see that. Suffer I thee not to touch her. Now, therefore, restore the man, his wife, for he is a prophet. Almighty calling Abraham a prophet way back when because the scripture says, if a lion roar, will not one fear? If Yahweh speak, will not one prophesy? So if you speak, what Yahweh has said, you are known as a prophet. And Yahweh let this man know that Abraham is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee, and thy shall live. And if thy restore her not, know thy that thy shall surely die, thy and all that are thine. So not just you, your wife, your sons, all of them going to die if you don't release this prophet's wife. And then it says this. Therefore Amalek rose up early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears. And the men were so afraid. Well, that's a good sign. Because they are showing their humbleness, their humility, and their fear. It says, Then Amalek called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I and what have I offended thee? 
that thy has brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin. Thy has done deeds into me that are not to be done. And Amalek said unto Abram, What sawest thy that thy has done this thing? The question was, when you came in this land, what did you see that allowed you to do this thing? That allowed you to tell me that this woman was your sister and allowed that sister to tell me that you was her brother. Look what it reads. It says in the 11th verse, and Abraham said, because the only reason I did that, because I thought surely the fear of Elohim is not in this place. And with the fear of Elohim not being in this place, they will slay me for my wife's sake, meaning they will slay me and take my wife. And we in a strange land don't really know y'all. And we thought that the fear that Yahweh have planted and planted upon us was not in this land. So instead of risking our life, we just lied. Or we told what they call, like they say, the white collar lie. We just told a little short lie. It was in reality, it got a lot of truth to it based on the bloodline. So he had a lot of truth to it when he said, it's my sister. But the reason he said it and that wise and him and Sarah had already decided to say it to anybody that they run into was because I thought surely the fear of Elohim is not in this place and they shall slay me for my wife's sake. The point of the presentation is, fear Yahweh and depart from evil. And we are proving that many people feared Yahweh that was not under the covenant of the law. And we are proving uh, throughout the times of man being upon the face of the earth. The fear of Yahweh have been some of the greatest words or the greatest words that have ever been spoken. And all the righteous acts of men that was known to be perfect on the earth moved by way of fearing Yahweh. And even here in this land, if y'all remember in Exodus, I think it's the seventh chapter where the, the plague was coming upon the animals, the hell and all that. And they said some of Pharaoh's uh, servants feared Elohim to where they took their animals in. Well, the people that didn't fear Elohim, that left their animals out, they all was destroyed by the hell. It lets us know there are rewards in fearing Yahweh. I don't care who you are. It also tells us, Israel, if we go back to the book of wisdom, to the book of Proverbs, and it tells us in the book of Proverbs, the fourth chapter, if we go there, please, by the law, and by the testimonies where we establish that we have light on this matter. It tells us in Proverbs, the fourth chapter, the seventh verse, and it reads, Wisdom 
is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy un, with all thy getting, get understanding. We must understand that the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And we see that wisdom is the principal thing. Well, if that's truth, then the fear of Yahweh must be principal. It must be. Because it is it is it that will get you wisdom and understanding. It also tells us why we're in the book of Proverbs again, if we take a look at the eighth chapter. The eighth chapter of Proverbs. And it tells us in the eighth chapter of Proverbs, Starting at the 11th verse to the 13th verse, and it reads, For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to wit, compared to it, which is wisdom. Our wisdom dwell with the prudent. And find out knowledge of the witty inventions. The fear of Yahweh is to hate, as we read in Job 1 and 1, hate evil. But not just evil, but what evil, or what comes out of evil, which is pride and arrogancy and the evil way. And the forward mouth do I hate. And again, this presentation is called Fear Yahweh and Depart from the Seven Things He Hates. Thus, it tells us one more time in this 13th verse, the fear of Yahweh is to hate evil, to depart from evil, to eschew evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. It also tells us, if we take a look at the 14th chapter of the book of Proverbs, the 16th verse, and it reads, let's start at the 15th verse, for it is so true. The simple believes every word. But the prudent, those that fear Yahweh and depart from evil, the prudent man look well to his going. A wise man fear and depart from evil. But the fool rage and is confident. But don't forget, you're a fool. And all his raging means nothing. All the confidence that he had uh, leaning upon his own understanding means nothing. It also tells us, if we take a look at the 22nd chapter, why we still find ourselves in the book of wisdom. Proverbs. 22 and 4, and it reads, By humility, humble in yourself, by humility 
and the fear of Yahweh are riches and honor and life. Look what else the fear of Yahweh give you. Look why the people that exercise in it was called perfect. And their days were prolonged, for it tells us in the fourth verse of Proverbs 22, by humility and the fear of Yahweh are riches and honor and life. It also tells us, if we turn our scriptures to Psalms 111, again, the same great psalm that our brother Yamin read for us all, I would like to read it a few verses again and expound on those verses to establish this great fear, this great clean fear that we are to have for our Creator, and not just for our Creator, but for our Father and our Mother. And in displaying that fear toward our Father and our Mother, we are also exercising in the fear toward our Creator. For it is He that commanded us to fear our mother and our father. And I'll just pick up on the ninth and 10th verse again, for I have already spoke on it. And our brother read uh, Psalms 11 clearly. So I will just expound on the ninth and 10th verse again. And it tells us in Psalms 111, the ninth and 10th verse, he has sent redemption into his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverent is his name. And again, this holiness and this reverence is clean. The Almighty is not making you, uh, twisting your arm, got you in a headlock to do anything. He asked our fathers and his command to do all that he said. And they agreed. They wasn't under no pressure. All they uh, agreement was based on what they have seen with their own eyes. So this uh, command is not grievous. It is not done by a master, but it is done by your creator. It is done by your father. It is done by your husband, one that loves you, one that Say he chastised you like a, a father chastises a son in whom he is well pleased. This is the reverence. This is the fear that Yahweh expects you to have toward him. A genuine fear. Thus it reads again. He sent rede redemption. Look what he did for you. And to his people. He have commanded his covenant forever and this redemption and this uh, uh, this covenant being forever and the covenant that he's speaking about that was forever is the covenant that he made with Abraham Isaac and Jacob and with this covenant brings forth fame with this covenant that was made with our fathers bring forth fame and glory, which he said he would never give to another. Thus it read, holy and reverent is his name. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. Well, we just read. How it spoke about wisdom is the principal thing. 
Well, what is more principle than wisdom? The 10th verse reads to us again. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. A good, a sound understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise endures forever. And the commandment is whatever Yahweh uttered. And if Yahweh uttered to keep the Sabbath day and to execute he that defiled the Sabbath day, well, that is understanding all that he has said and all that he has said dealing with that command. If he say that the land going to lie without you and enjoy its Sabbath while you find yourself in the enemy's land, then that's exactly what he means, and that is the command that he, the, that he commands you to follow. There's a time for everything under the sun. Sometimes it's a yes, and sometimes it's a no. Well, whatever the answer is, the faithful prophet had to tell Israel. Not so today. Today we mix apples and oranges, and we're going to tell you based on our teachings, based on our lesson, based on our class. And that is not the fear of Yahweh. It also tells us if we turn our scriptures to the book of the law, Exodus, the 12th chapter, Exodus, the 12th chapter, for it tells us in Exodus, the 12th chapter, these words. And I said Exodus, the 12th chapter. I missed Exodus, the 20th chapter, the 12th verse. Exodus, the 20th chapter, sorry about that, the 12th verse. And your brother stated, when you look up that word reverent, you will find that it denotes fear. It denotes what is called a clean fear. Thus, we find in Exodus, the 20th chapter, the 12th verse, it reads, honor. And this honor denotes fear and respect. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which Yahweh thy Elohim give thee. It also tells us, if we turn our book to the book of Leviticus, the 19th chapter, to establish to fear Yahweh and depart from evil, and to establish when we read in Psalms 111, verse 19 and 20, 9 and 10, should I have said, it denotes a clean fear. For it tells us in Leviticus, the 19th chapter, the third verse, and it reads, Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father and keep my Sabbaths. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. So again, we see that the narrative changes not. It's all about fearing Yahweh and departing from evil. And this reverence denote a clean fear that was not just uh, commanded for us to display toward our Creator, but also our mother and our father. It also tells us, if we take one more look, in the book of Malachi, the very first chapter of Malachi, 
the last book of your holy scriptures based on the chronological order that is given. It tells us in the book of Malachi, the first chapter, the sixth verse. Malachi, the first chapter, the sixth verse. And we just read honor. And let's see, do this denote the fear of our creator? For it reads, a son honors his father. And we just read that we're supposed to honor our father and our mother in Exodus, the 20th chapter, the 12th verse. And your brother denoted that with fear. He compared that with fear and took you to Leviticus, the 19th chapter, and showed you the word fear, that thy shall fear thy mother and thy father. Then I am taking you now to the book of Malachi, the first chapter, the sixth verse, and it reads, A son honors, based on the command, a son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? The same wording that you find in Exodus, the 20th chapter, the 12th verse. Thus he asks, where is my honor? And if I be a master, and he truly is the master of the world, where is my fear? Say Yahweh of hosts. And to you, O priests, that despise my name, don't forget the name is holy and reverent, that despise my name, and ye say, wherein have we despised thy name? And as it speaks in the law, thy are not to take Yahweh name in vain. And many times when we put Yahweh name on something that he did not say, you have truly taken Yahweh name in vain. It also tells us Israel and allows us to know that not only was we to have fear toward our Father, the Creator of the heaven and earth, but we were also to have fear toward our mother and our father. And that the priests lacked in fear and no one of Israel was supposed to lack the fear of Yahweh, not the king. If we turn our scriptures back to the book of the law, to the book of Deuteronomy, the 17th chapter, we will find that the king was not excused. He was supposed to live with the fear of Yahweh, as we just read about the priests and Malachi 1 and 6, and as we're going to read, dealing with all Israel. But right now, let's turn our scriptures to Deuteronomy 17 to show that the king was to live with the fear of Yahweh. And don't forget, Proverbs 1 is none other than the king's son speaking about the wisdom that one must have to truly understand that it is all about the fear of Yahweh. Deuteronomy 17. And it tells us in Deuteronomy 17, if we start reading at the 13th verse, Deuteronomy 17, the 13th verse. And it reads, and all the people shall hear and fear and do no more.
more sumptuously. When thy art come into the land which Yahweh thy Elohim give thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me like as all the nations that are about me. Thy shall in any wise set him king over thee, whom Yahweh thy Elohim shall choose, one from among thy brethren, shall thy set king over thee. Thy may is not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt. To the end that he should multiply horses, for as much as Yahweh has said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wise to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sit upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests and priests the Levites. And it shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life. Why? That he, just like we, it says, that he may learn to fear Yahweh, his Elohim, to keep all the words of this law and these statues to do them. Did y'all get that? All that mess you heard on social media yesterday talking about how in the heck can you teach the fear of Yahweh before you do the law or without the law and all that. The Almighty just told us, not just dealing with the common man, but dealing with the head, the king. The king, it reads in the 19th verse, and it shall be with him. What? This law shall be with him, and he shall read therein all the days of his life. And he is reading in it all the days of his life that he may learn to fear Yahweh. His Elohim. And how would you know if he learned? Because he will do all that he said, just like Abraham did. It reads, that he may learn to fear Yahweh, his Elohim, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren. And many of you, your hearts have been lifted up. You have condemned your brother that have told you to fear Yahweh and depart from evil. But it's only because you don't fear him. Because if the king did it, it says that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren, that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom he and his children in the midst of it so even the king is not exempt if you want to be wise if you want to live then you must fear Yahweh and depart from the seven things he ate. It also tells us why we still in the book of Deuteronomy, if we turn to the 10th chapter, for it allows us to know not just the king, but all Israel. 
is to fear Yahweh and depart from evil. It is truly wisdom. For it tells us in Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, if we start reading at the 12th verse, and it tells us in the 12th verse, and now, Israel, what does Yahweh thy Elohim require of thee? Look at this, Israel. And we got people teaching, call itself teaching, that we are sinners. We are in error. We are against the words of Yah when we open up our mouth and cry out loud and tell them to fear Yahweh and depart from evil. I just showed that at the beginning of creation, that was the narrative. In the middle of creation, that was the narrative. When the covenant of the law was given to the children of Israel, after they was freed out of bondage, that was the narrative. And we are seeing in the book of Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, what Elohim requires of Israel when they go into the land of promise. And it reads again in Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, the 12th verse, to the 15th verse, and it reads, And now, Israel, what does Yahweh thy Elohim require of thee? It allows us to know, but to fear Yahweh thy Elohim. First, it didn't say to walk in all his ways. It didn't say to love him. It didn't say to serve him. It didn't say to uh, uh, with all thy soul, thy heart and soul first. The first thing it said is, and now Israel what does Yahweh thy Elohim require of thee? To fear Yahweh thy Elohim. That is the first thing said. And why is that the first thing said? Because Yahweh is the creator. And he know all. And he know for you to obey him, you're going to have to fear him. So the first thing that is said, is fear Yahweh thy Elohim. Then it reads to walk in all his ways. And I started it off saying that Noah walked with Elohim because he feared him. The scripture tells us even before Noah, Enoch walked with Elohim. Well, I'm quite sure that all come by way of fear as we are reading what is required for the Israelites when they go into the land of promise. The 13th verse reads, to keep the commandments of Yahweh. That's why you're not going to keep them without the fear, and I'm going to prove it. And his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Behold, the heavens and the heavens of heavens is Yahweh. Thy Elohim, the earth also, with all that therein is, including you. Only Yahweh had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people, as it is this day. So in this choosing, Yahweh chose you to fear him and to depart from evil and to hearken and obey his voice. It also tells us, if we turn our scriptures to Isaiah, the 29th chapter, 
we had testimonies of how what Yahweh commanded our fathers to do and what Yahweh required our fathers to do in the land of promise, it was tampered with to where we were receiving not the fear of Yahweh, but the fear of man. And we was receiving uh, through the fear of man how we was to fear Yahweh. And as I stated earlier in this presentation, many of our brothers and sisters that are by the way of the Christian persuasion, they don't even believe that you should fear Yahweh at all because they teach that Yahweh is just love. Well, we have read for two hours now showing throughout the Holy Scriptures the fear of Yahweh. Not the fear of Yahweh based on a bunch of feeble people, but the fear of Yahweh based on the voice of Yahweh. And the people that feared him, they did not become feeble. They became perfect. Thus, it tells us in Isaiah, the 29th chapter, if we all turn there, to show how the fear of Yahweh was tempered with among our fathers because our fathers despised Yahweh's word and threw his word behind them, and they taught the imaginations of their own heart. Thus, it tells us in Isaiah, the 29th chapter, If we pick up at the 13th verse, and it reads in the 13th verse, Wherefore, Yahweh said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and we hear that all the time, but their acts and their confirming and not confirming allows us to know and see the fear, the lack of fear. It says, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me. And you hear them all the time. Let Yahweh be magnified. Yah let Yahweh be glorified. But then when we bring up Yahweh's word, you don't acknowledge it. So you're just speaking with your lips to honor me. But have removed that integrity is in your heart. It says, but have removed their heart far from me. And what? In their fear. Why is fear keep being you? We all the way up in the days of the prophets. And the Almighty still saying the same thing he said in Genesis. And their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of man. So you're not getting the fear. You didn't know that reverence represented clean fear. Because the fear that you're being taught about Yahweh is coming by way of the precepts of man. And not by way of what is written. It also tells us, Israel, if we take a look at the 23rd verse, and it reads, But when he see his children, the work of my hands, in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name, and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and shall fear the Elohim of Israel. They also, and note, that they errant because they don't fear. But we just read that they should fear, and then it reads, they also, that err in spirit, shall come to understanding. For wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But in all thy getting, get understanding. And the Almighty let us know 
dealing with the hope of our people, that there's going to be a day that Yahweh going to put that fear back in them. And when that happens, they also, the air and spirit, shall come to understanding. So all you that read the Bible with an air spirit will come to understand what you are reading once you start truly fearing Yahweh. And they that murmur shall learn doctrine. You that don't fear Yahweh and keep murmuring, thinking you're murmuring against your brother when you ain't murmuring against no one but the Creator, the Almighty said, when this spirit of fear come upon you, you will no longer err. Because you will come to understanding, and you will no longer murmur, because you will learn this doctrine. The same words that we have taught, fear Yahweh and depart from evil. The same words that you have taught with our own doctrine. You see for a fact with your own eyes that this was not Brother Shemuel doctrine, but this is the word and the doctrine of our Creator. Thus it tells us one more time in the 23rd and 24th verse, but when he see his children, the work of my hands, in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name, and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and shall fear the Elohim of Israel. They are also the air and spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmur shall learn this doctrine. How about that? It also tells us Can you still hear me? All right. It also tells us, if we take a look in the book of Hosea, the 10th chapter, the book of Hosea, the 10th chapter, and it allows us to know about the precepts of man. The precepts of man and the fear of man is no good for Israel. It tells us in the 10th chapter, and I would like to read in the, the first five verses, denoting the precepts of man, which, which come by way of lack of fear. And it says Israel is an empty vine. Hosea 10, 1 through 5. Israel is an empty vine. He brings forth fruit into himself according to the multitude of his fruit. He has increased the altars according to the goodness of his land. They have made goodly images. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. For now they shall say, we have no king. Because, please take note, we fear not Yahweh. What then should a king do unto us? Dealing with their precepts of how to fear Yahweh. It says, they have spoken words swearing falsely and making a covenant. Thus, judgment springs up like a hamlock in the furloughs of the field. The inhabitants of Samaria shall fear because of the calves of Beth Avon, for the people thereof shall mourn over it. And the priest thereof that rejoice on it, for the glory thereof, because it is departed from it. So this is a, 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 a testimony of how our fathers uh, perceived how they should fear Yahweh and what they was actually fearing. 
It wasn't Yahweh because the the fear of Yahweh was taught by the precepts of man. So man gave us these precepts. Read it again. The man gave us these precepts. So our fear was similar to this, more so to what we are reading in our Holy Scripture and why we should have feared Yahweh. It also tells us, if we take a look in the book of Jeremiah, for we were to fear Yahweh and depart from evil. We was to fear our fathers and our mothers, but we were not to fear man. We were not to fear our sister. We were not to fear our brother. For it tells us, nor trust in him. And when I say fear, I'm talking about in the sense of you trusting him. And many of y'all have feared your brother. You're still fearing your brother over Yahweh. Many of you are still under the precepts of man. Dealing with fear of Yahweh, and my greatest testimony of that is ties. So you can say all you want. You can say, no, that man wrong on that one. That's a lie. If you went in your pocket and thought you was giving a tie to anybody on the Sabbath day, on the first year, I don't care what day it was, you trusted in man. Your fear was in that man. That man put you on front street in front of the class. He brought up your situation. He brought up you uh, robbing Elohim. And he told you that we collecting tithes every Saturday. And you start paying them. Now, what's that? where did that fear come from? Is that the fear of Elohim? Because tithes was never paid every week as they teach. Tithes were never paid in another man's land, from another man's land. So when you paid tithes, whenever you paid them, it wasn't based on the fear of Yahweh. It was based on the fear of that man. That man changed the word. The scripture says that Israel paid their tithes every year and every three years. The man said every week. Y'all are in these classes, in these churches, in these congregations, fearing man and not your creator. And I can prove it every day. Thus, it reads in Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. If we all go there, please. And it tells us, we that fear Yahweh, In the fifth verse, it reads, Thus said Yahweh, Cursed be the man that trusts in man, and make flesh his arm, and you did, whose heart departed from Yahweh. You did. Your heart departed from Yahweh. When the scripture says in Deuteronomy, the 14th chapter, every year and every three years, and it tell you from what land and you do it any other way, your heart has truly departed from Yahweh. And your trust and your fear was in that man that stood before you. For he shall be like the heath, and you was, and you still are, because you trusted in him. You have given your money up, and you have been a recipient of nothing. The scripture says if that was true, he would have opened the windows of heaven and pulled you out of blessing. You have not received that blessing, Israel. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good comes. When your brother told you, no, get out your pocketbook, get out your wallet. You didn't see it for a long time. Now you see it. I got many people who will stand behind me today. 
saying that they had erred and saying that their uh, teachers or marais or leaders or elders robbed them. I got many people who stand behind me today, but not when the good first came, you didn't. Not before I went, walked around and hand out flyers about tithe. Not before that, you didn't. You didn't see the good when it came. You didn't accept the good when it came. But the Almighty had mercy on you and allowed you to see it. And now you can talk like I can talk. Because many of you have been in these congregations, in these sanctuaries, in these classes before these men. And you know they was robbing you. You know that you were doing things that is not even written in this book. And that is a proof that you have trusted in man. It also tells us For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusts in Yahweh, and whose hope Yahweh is. For he or they shall be as a tree planted by the rivers that spread out her roots by the river and shall not see and shall not see when he comes but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought neither shall cease from yielding fruit the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? They that don't trust Yahweh or they that do trust Yahweh, should I say. They will know if their heart deceived them or not. All you got to do is look at your ways and read what Yahweh say. If you ain't doing what he said, then your heart has deceived you. Your heart is walking away from what Yahweh has said, and you will know it. Thus, it reads again, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? He that fear Yahweh and trust in Yahweh will know it. I, Yahweh, search the heart. I try the ruins, even to every, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. It also tells us, far as trusting in man, let us turn our scriptures and dealing with fear. Let us go to. Another book of wisdom, which is called the book of Ecclesiastics. And we are going to the eighth chapter. So we see throughout this presentation, we are to fear Yahweh and depart from evil. We have seen that in process of time that men have uh, uh, forsook Yahweh, they have not feared him, nor have they departed from evil. They have started teaching their own precepts of fear toward Yahweh to where it led us to trust in men and their words. Thus, we find ourselves back in the book of wisdom to warn us again. And to allow us to know that we have been on point with this presentation, which is called Fear Yahweh and Depart from the Seven Things He Hate. And it tells us in the book of Ecclesiastics, the eighth chapter,
in the 11th, 12th, and 13th verse. That's what I would like to read. Ecclesiastics 8, 11th to the 13th verse. And it reads in this wise. And this proves again that the fear of Yahweh is what will allow you to keep those laws, statutes, and commandments that you speak of. It says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. So what that is saying is, there are people collecting tithes when they shouldn't. But since there is no judgment coming on their head speedily, they will keep on doing it. Now, you might get a little fear, and you might say, oh, boy, how did I miss this? I'm not going to do that no more. But with you not truly fearing him, your understanding is still off. And you will say, well, I'm not going to collect tithes anymore. I'll just tell them it's offerings. Well, that allows us to know you still don't possess sound wisdom, nor do you truly fear Yahweh because you are making an exception. All you did is drop the tithe and kept on offering. You're still stealing. And for you to steal, you must not fear Yahweh, because stealing is one of the seven things he hates. And they love to say, well, they always talk about fear Yahweh and depart from evil, but they never talk about the law. They never teach the law, and that's a lie. We teach the law every week, just like we're teaching it today. We just taught on the law of time. With fear Yahweh and depart from evil. You don't hear the law in our teachings because you have not become a recipient to fear Yahweh. I just correlated fear Yahweh with the ties, and that's the law. It tells us again, Israel, because a sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. You are not going to depart from evil because you know this judgment has not came upon you or you think you're not a, a recipient of punishment, so you keep doing it. If you knew you was going to get killed today, you would drop it yesterday. You would have dropped it yesterday. You wouldn't have took it to the day. But you know that ain't nobody been killed. So as it reads, because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the hearts of the sons of Adam, man, mankind is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, in his days be prolonged. Yet surely I know and note what it said. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, in his days be prolonged. That's the same as because of sins against an evil work is not executed speedily. The Almighty prolonged his days. To allow him to continue in his evil. It says, knowing that, it says, yet, surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear Elohim, which fear before him. Did y'all get that? The evil man, he going to do his evil, and he ain't going to change from it if he don't have no fear. And the Almighty, and in the psalmist, 
I mean, the, uh, the wise man, which was Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes, saying that, well, but it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as the shadow, because he feared not before Elohim. But before he said that, he said, I know that it shall be well with them that fear Elohim, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, them that fear not Yahweh. And let me read it out, and it will prove that. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow. Why not, Yahweh? Please tell Israel, because he feared not before Elohim. And I know a lot of wise men that we have set up on pedestals that have not truly lived out their days. And it was only because they did not truly fear Yahweh. We just read in Isaiah 29, you can say a lot of things out of your mouth. And the people will come to you like you singing, like you Luther Vandross or somebody. But they won't hear you because it's not even in your heart. You don't really fear him. You sound good. You can draw a crowd. But you don't fear him. And just think, I'm not the judge, but we read the judge words. Just think about all the people y'all know that spoke highly. Let Yahweh be magnified. We this, we that, and another. But they was robbing you. They was taking your money every week. And you can't excuse them not being a servant of Yah because Yahweh is against anyone that's a respected person. So you can't excuse them. You got to call it like it is. It tells us, Israel, if we take a look at the 12th chapter of Ecclesiastes, why are we still in Ecclesiastics? And it tells us in Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, I would love to pick up at the 9th verse and read to the 14th verse. Ecclesiastics, the 12th chapter, the 9th verse, the conclusion of the matter. We took you to Genesis, to Malachi, throughout the law, in the books of wisdom, and we have come to a conclusion. And the conclusion is found in Ecclesiastics, the 12th chapter, starting at the ninth verse, and it reads, please ask that one of the books of the wisdom, right at the Proverbs, or Song of Solomon, should I have said, sorry about that, it should be Songs of Solomon, then, no, you're right, Proverbs, then Ecclesiastes, then Song of Solomon. So it's right after Proverbs, the second book of wisdom. Ecclesiastes 12, 9, and it reads, And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. He using fear of Yahweh to teach. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many Proverbs. It takes the fear of Yahweh to do that, according to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. It says, The preacher sought out to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright. You ain't never going to have a word better than what is written. Even words of truth. The words 
of the wise are as galls and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And that is a great verse to take heed to because we have uh, masters of other assemblies, of other books, and they have said the same thing that was given from the one shepherd. But our brothers and sisters that don't truly fear Yahweh don't understand that. They see David's name and they say, where's David? Ain't that what uh, Ezekiel said? Well, we just read in the 11th verse, the word of the wise are as galls and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And the words that were given to the masters of assemblies that I am correlating to the prophets came from one shepherd, and that shepherd was called Prophet Nathan. So whatever Jeremiah, oh, let me put it this way, whatever Isaiah, Hosea, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, the Psalms is saying about David seed or David name is the same thing that came and is given for one shepherd. And again, Israel, that shepherd was none other than Nathan the prophet. And that vision is found in Second Samuel, the seventh chapter. It tells us in the twelfth verse, and further by these, my son, be acknowledged of making many books. There is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. And I truly believe that Israel is weary, not weary for studying the Holy Scriptures. They are weary for studying and inquiring of many books. They have spent so many years in Christianity. Yeah, you might be out, and you might have been out the last five years, but look at how many years you was in there. And look at what you're teaching and saying since you've been out. So you ain't all the way out. And a lot of these books is a weariness of the flesh. And we got another one that they are weary with. It's called the Book of Yasser. The book of Yasser is mentioned in our Holy Scripture twice. And it denotes writings of of heroic and things like that in our days and in the battles that we had. And it talks about this book called Yasser. And it's denoted as a lost book. I can show you another book that's mentioned in your Bible and you don't have it. So it is denote a lost book. But for some reason, Israel done got sidetracked, uh, boo to have you say that, because these people done made a book called Yasser, a lost book. They done made the lost book appear, <coughs> excuse me, the lost book appear. Now how can you do that? If the book is lost, it's lost. How are you going to have a copy of a lost book? And I tell my brothers and sisters, fear Yahweh and depart from evil. Don't trust a man. Look up those books. Do your homework. I already did it. And I wouldn't be on here saying these things if I didn't know that that was true. Look up the book of Gasser. Look up how many versions it is. They even got a Hebrew version. And look up who wrote them. And tell me if they are not fabricated. And you're going to put that over the word of Yah? 
your brother telling you that Yahweh said he brought you out and gave you the law. And then you're going to go in one of these books and say, well, no, nah, they kept, they was keeping the law. They had the law in Egypt. They was keeping the Sabbath in Egypt. So you will put another book over the Holy Scripture just to make you right because you lack understanding. That is terrible. So again, it tells us, Israel, and further by these, my son, be acknowledged of making many books. And we even got brothers, <laughs> boy, we even had people on this earth that said we will not have the true knowledge of the Holy Scriptures until we write them ourselves. And many of y'all know who I'm talking about. But the truth remains. For it says, be acknowledged of making many books. There is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Quit inquiring of the New Testament in these books. And quit trying to make your own book. For this is the conclusion. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. For the 13th verse reads, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter and of this presentation. Fear Elohim and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. In Hebrew, it reads, for this is the whole man. And we are waiting to be whole. We will be whole once Yahweh saved Jacob out of their troubles. So if you fear Yahweh, and then Yahweh saved you, you will be the whole man. And you will fear Yahweh and keep his commandments in the land of the living. For this is the whole man. The 14th verse in closing reads, if you don't believe me, for Elohim shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. And I know a lot of you got secrets. The Almighty letting us know he's going to bring that out, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Well, it's going to be good if you avouch today to fear Yahweh and depart from the things he hates. When he finds you, it's going to be good. It also tells us in this conclusion, if we turn our scriptures to Amos, the eighth chapter. Amos, the eighth chapter. We winding down. We have a couple more minutes. Then we will open up for the Q and A. Right now, I will ask each and every one of you to be at Amos, the eighth chapter. For it tells us in Amos, the eighth chapter, even though these words was for our fathers in their land. During the time of their great disobedience, I'm using these words today toward us in this great presentation. And it tells us in Amos, the 8th chapter, starting at the 11th verse to the 13th verse, and it reads, Behold, the days come, for there is a time for everything under the sun, Israel. Say Yahweh Elohim, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the true words of Yahweh, and they shall wonder. 
from sea to sea, and it's truly a, a, a famine among us today because we're not hearing the true words of Yahweh. We're not hearing nobody say, fear Yahweh, depart from evil. Only when it's good for them, when they fight their Christian brother and all that, yeah, they'll bring up these scriptures. But when your brother bring it up to you, you act like you don't even know what the scripture means. But you use it against your Christian brother. For so there, are, there is truly a famine among us today of hearing the true words. We hear words, but not the true words. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the true word of Yahweh, and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgin, the young lady, and the young man faint for that truth. It says for thirst, but that's the famine. Faint for that truth. And many of us have fainted, have been weary in the earth, not knowing why we're here and what we have done and what we got to do when the day starts, when it ends. We have been weary. But not so with your brother teaching to fear Yahweh and to depart from evil. Let us turn our scripture back to the book of wisdom. It allows us to know in the book of wisdom, in the 16th chapter, if we all turn there, please. And it tells us in this great chapter, according to the sixth verse, and it reads, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Let's stop. Because our brothers and sisters say, no, quit. Hey, they got a something on the post. They got a jackass with a with a uh, paintbrush in his mouth. They ain't calling no names out, but we all know who they talking to. And they said, "Don't let nobody tell you to fear Yahweh and depart from evil without." Mentioning or teaching the law. So they saying, don't let nobody come tell you fear Yahweh and depart from evil unless they can sit down and teach you the law and all that. Basically what they saying. And it was a blasphemous statement because because those words, that statement, it's the greatest statement that any person can say to any man. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil is great. Did you not read what it said in Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 7? Well, if you missed it. Remember this, what it says in Proverbs, the 16th chapter, the 6th verse. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. What is iniquity, Israel? It's not iniquity, sin. It's not, it's not iniquity, something that is put on one when they go against the words of Yah. Well, the Almighty saying, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. It is taken away. It is forgiven. And by the fear of Yahweh, men depart from evil. Meaning, you won't do it again. The Almighty already taken it away from you. He said, I'm going to use mercy. I'm going to use mercy and truth. To purge your iniquities, but I'm going to need you to fear me to depart from evil. How about that, Israel? 
and why we in this great book. Let us turn our scriptures to the sixth chapter, to the seven things that Yahweh hates. And while you turn in your book to the sixth chapter, I would like to just quote one more verse that is found in the ninth chapter, the tenth verse. But I would like for the listening audience to go to the sixth chapter of Proverbs. And while you are going to the sixth chapter, I am quoting a verse out of the ninth chapter of Proverbs, the tenth verse. And it reads... The fear, because I don't want to say nothing, and you come back and say, well, he said this, and he didn't show the scripture. Proverbs 9, verse 10, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. And the only way that you can get the true knowledge of the holy is, is to fear Yahweh. So you that teach that we don't have to fear Yahweh, you that teach and belittle uh, the the decoration to fear Yahweh, it allows us to know that you do not have the knowledge of the whole, nor understanding. Now, let's go to the sixth chapter of Proverbs. And we're going to pick up at the 16th verse. For it tells us in Proverbs, the sixth chapter, the 16th verse, These six things does Yahweh hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And what are they? And as we quote these words, as we quote these words, it tells us, I just, just give me a second because I don't want to repeat it. I don't want to quote it wrong. It tells us in the book of Lamentation, while we read these words, I want to ask you to do this. Let me get there first. While we're reading in Proverbs, the 6th chapter, the 16th to the 19th verse, I want you to search and try your ways. When I'm reading this, I want you to search and try your ways. And if any of your ways coincide with the things that Yahweh hurt, hate, turn again to Yahweh, meaning depart from it. And I am quoting this from Lamentation 3 and 40. Where it says, let us search and try our ways and turn again to Yahweh. So when I read these. Seven things that Yahweh hate. Let's try and search our ways and see if we in error. And if we is, let's change today. Let's depart today. It tells us in Proverbs, the sixth chapter, the 16th verse, these six things does Yahweh hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. And don't forget, we're going to search and try our ways. If you know you present this, do away with it today. Depart from that evil today. A proud look. What is a proud look? A proud look can be defined. I have several. I just need to pick one or two. That way we can continue these seven and end the presentation. 
a proud look, it tells us in Psalms 1827, it reads in this wise, dealing with a proud look. Let me get there. Y'all can write them down as I, as I state them out. Psalms 1827, and it says this. It tells us in the 18th chapter of Psalms, the 25th verse to the 27th verse, and it reads, With the merciful, thou will show thyself merciful. And with an upright man, thou will show thyself upright. With the pure, thou will show thyself pure. And with the forward, thy will show thyself forward. For thy will save the afflicted people, but will bring down high looks, meaning bring down this proud look. It also tells us in the book of Jeremiah, the 13th chapter, dealing with this proud look, because I want to make sure I don't just give you what it says, but I want you to know what these seven things is that Yahweh hate. That way you'll know if you're doing it or not. It tells us in Jeremiah, the 13th chapter, the 15th, the 15th verse. And it allows us to know, as I showed throughout this whole presentation, Almighty ain't just talking about the common man. The Almighty ain't just talking about the king. The Almighty ain't just talking about the priest. The Almighty talking about all of his people. To fear him and to depart from the seven things he hates. And here's another testimony, Dilly. Excuse me, dealing with a proud look. For it tells us in Jeremiah the 13th chapter, the 15th verse, Hear ye and give ear, be not proud, for Yahweh has spoken. Give glory to Yahweh your Elohim before he caused darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. And while ye look for light, he turn it into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. But if ye will not hear it, being proud, look, or, or, or forward, it says, but if ye will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride. Proud, look, pride. And my eyes shall weep sore and run down with tears, because Yahweh's flock is carried away captive. Say unto the king, not just the common people, say unto the king and to the queen, humble yourself. Sit down, for your principalities shall come down even the crown of your glory. The cities of the south shall be shut up, and none shall open them. Yehuda shall be carried away captive. All of it, it shall be wholly carried away captive. Lift up your eyes. Behold them that come from the north. Where is the flock that was given thee, thy beautiful flock? What wilt thou say when he shall punish thee? For thou hast taught them to be captains and as chiefs over thee. Shall not sorrow take thee as a woman and travel? And if thou say in thy heart, Wherefore come these things upon me? For the greatness of thy iniquity are thy skirt discovered, and thy heels made bare. So it allows us to know it is a sin to have a proud look, to use pride against Yahweh and his people. 
It also tells us in Proverbs, the sixth chapter, the seventeenth verse. It reads, a lying tongue, a lying tongue, and a testimony and a definition of this lying tongue we can find in Psalms 102, and it tells us in Psalms 102, in the Second, excuse me, I said 102, 120, verse 2. Psalms 120, verse 2. And it tells us in the second and third verse of Psalms 120, Deliver my soul, O Yahweh, from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. What shall be given unto thee, or what shall be done unto thee, thy false tongue? So it allows us to know that a false tongue, lying lips, is another thing or the second thing that is listed that Yahweh hates. It also tells us, if we take a look at Jeremiah, the 28th chapter. To denote that this lying lips is sin. And if you are guilty of it, you need to do away with that evil this day. It tells us in Jeremiah 28, can you hear me? Because I can hear some of my ear like this. Jeremiah, the 28th chapter, the seventh verse. And it reads, to allow us to know that Yahweh hate a lion, lion tongue or lion lips and what these lion lips can do toward us. It tells us in Jeremiah, the 28th chapter, I pick up at the seventh verse, and it reads, Nevertheless, hear thy now this word that I speak in thy ears and in the ears of all the people. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. The prophet which prophesied of peace, using lying lips, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that Yahweh have truly sent him. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and breaked it. And Hananiah speak in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus said Yahweh, Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. And he, you, he said this using lying lips. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Then the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah the prophet after that Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus say Yahweh, just because he lied, and using lying lips, Thy has broken the yoke of wood, but thy shall make for them yokes of iron. For thus say Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I have given him the beasts of the field also. Then said the prophet Jeremiah to Hananiah, the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, Yahweh have not sent thee, 
But thou has made this people to trust in a lie. How? With lying lips. Therefore, thus said Yahweh, Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year, thy shall die. Why? Because thy has taught rebellion against Yahweh. How? With lying lips. So Hananiah, the prophet, died the same year in the seventh month. And if y'all really understand, reading this with understanding, there's another good reason why you should fear. You see what happened to him? <laughs> what you mean you don't both to fear the creator? It also tells us, if we take a look, why are we still in the book of Jeremiah at the 29th chapter? And I think the 29th chapter is what I just read, wasn't it? No, 28th. The 29th chapter, the next chapter, if we look at the next chapter, at the 31st, 31st verse, it tells us, pick up at the 30th verse, it says, the 30th verse of the 29th chapter of Jeremiah, then came the word of Yahweh into Jeremiah, saying, Send to all them of the captivity, saying, Thus said Yahweh concerning Shemaiah, the Nephthalmite, because that Shemaiah had prophesied unto you lying lips, and I sent him not. And he caused you to trust in a lie. Therefore, thus said Yahweh, Behold, I will punish Shemaiah, the Nethanite, in his seed. He shall ha not have a man to dwell among his this people, neither shall he behold the good that I will do for my people, say Yahweh, because he hath taught rebellion against Yahweh. How? With lying lips. It also tells us in the book of Proverbs, the sixth chapter, in that 17th verse, it says, And hands that shed innocent blood. <clears throat> what do that mean? And could we be guilty of that? Well, let's see. It tells us, well, I ain't going to. I'm, I'll quote this one because we read it today, Genesis 4, 9 and 10, where it talks about how Cain slew Abel, and that is innocent blood being shed. Also in Genesis, the ninth chapter, it tells us in the fifth verse, and it reads, And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. Whoso shed man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of Elohim made he man. So it allows us to know that Yahweh is totally against and he hate anyone that shed innocent blood. It also tells us in this great proverb and in the 18th verse and heart that devise wicked imaginations. And that's a good one. And it's so good that the Almighty destroyed the earth for this one. Don't forget, it says every man imagination was only evil continuously in Genesis, the sixth chapter. 
Well, here, it allows us to know that Yahweh hate it. And it says, in heart that devises wicked imagination. Again, the first one I would have used was found in Genesis 6 and 5, where it talked about the people uh imagination was only evil and we know that he destroyed the earth so we know what a wicked imagination is also jeremiah 7 and 9 we spoke on that when it talked about uh trusting in man and the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked you can look at that in jeremiah 17 and 9 i will use this one that is found in doma romney the 29th chapter the 19th verse for wicked imaginations let me turn there please doma romney 29 19, and it reads, and let me pick up at the 18th, that way you can get it. It says, least there shall be among you man or woman or family or tribe who heart turn away this day from Yahweh our Elohim to go and serve the gods of these nations. Least there shall be among you a root that bear gall and wormwood. And it come to pass when he hear the words of this curse that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace. And that's what you're saying today. Shabbat Shalom. I don't care how many times Brother Samuel tell us where we are under the curses. I'm going to have peace. Though I walk in the imagination of my own heart. To do what? To add drunkenness to thirst. Yahweh said, I will not spare him. But then the anger of Yahweh and his jealousy shall smoke against that man. And all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And Yahweh shall blot out his name from under heaven. This sounds like a very serious offense. Just because of your wicked imagination and don't forget the great words that we find in proverbs where it says the thought of foolishness is seen don't never forget that the thought of foolishness is sin it also tells us and Proverbs, it speaks about feet that be swift and running to mischief. What do that mean? One place we can find a definition and an abolishment is found in Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59 tells us, In the seventh verse, and I'll pick up at the fourth verse and read down to it where you can get it. I'll start at the third verse and read down to the, what verse did I say, to the seventh verse. That way you can get it. And it tells us in the third verse, For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue have murdered perverseness. None call for justice, nor any plea for truth. 
They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch crockeries, eggs, and weave the spider webs. He that eat up their eggs die, and that which is crushed break out into a vapor. Their webs shall not become garment, neither shall they over cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. And we are dealing with feet that be swift and running to mischief. And it reads, their thoughts, excuse me, their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. That's what it means. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their path. In the path of those who feet that be swift and running to mischief. And we just read also in the fourth verse where it says they conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. So that allows us to get an example of what it means, one whose feet runs to do mischief. One more place that I can use is found in 1 Samuel, and that's just for this presentation. There are many places that we can use. This is the places I have chosen to use and bring forth today. 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. One second. And it tells us in the 22nd verse, and it reads, Then answered all the wicked men and men of Beliah of those that went with David and said, Because they went not with us, we will not give them out of the spoil that we have recovered, save to every man his wife and his children, that they may lead them away and depart. Then said David, Ye shall not do so, my brethren, with that which Yahweh hath given us, who have preserved us and delivered the company that came against us into our hands? For who will hearken unto you in this matter? And we are speaking about uh, feet that run swift in mischief. It says, For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that go down to the battle, so shall his part be that tarries by the stuff. They shall part alike. And it was so from that day forward that he made it a statue and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. So what was transpiring was we had brothers that was running swift into mischief. And the missive that they was running to was they didn't want to share it with their brothers and sisters because they didn't go out to the battle. But you needed people to be with the, the with the women and the children and your and your livestock. So there was men that guarded them. Well, when they came back, the uh, <clears throat> the people that was with David, some of the people, those that was at foot run into mischief. They wanted to keep everything to themselves and don't give none of the men that didn't go anything. And David said, no, that would be sin. So David made it that day a statue 
and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. It also tells us in the 19th verse, a false witness. What is a false witness? And we got to know what it is because Yahweh hate them. He hate them. So you better know what it is to make sure you ain't one. Thus it reads, a false witness. We could turn our scripture to Psalms 27. And it tells us in Psalms 27 to define a false witness. In the 12th verse, and it reads, Deliver me not over into the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out. Cruelty. These false witnesses so cruel that they breathe out cruelty. It also tells us in Zechariah, the eighth chapter. If we turn there, please. Zechariah, the eighth chapter. And it tells us in Zechariah, the eighth chapter. The 16th verse. Zechariah, the 8th chapter, the 16th verse tells us, These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. So the Almighty did not want us to speak lies. He wanted us to execute and speak ye every man the truth. It also tells us in Isaiah the 63rd chapter, we turn in please, to establish false and speaking lies. Isaiah 63. And it reads in the 7th and 8th verse, Isaiah 63, verse 7 and 8. And it reads. Once I get there. I will mention the loving kindness of Yahweh and the praise of Yahweh according to all that Yahweh bestowed upon us. And the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he had bestrode upon them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. For he said, surely, because he hate a false witness speaking lies. For he said, surely they are my people. Children that will not lie. So he was their savior. Because they refuse to lie. And that is one of the things he hates. And one more place I would love to go that just came to my mind. Ezekiel, the 13th chapter. Let us go there in closing on the false witness that speak lies. Ezekiel, the 13th chapter. And it tells us in Ezekiel, the 13th chapter, and I will read down to the seventh verse. Verse. 
I actually will read to the ninth verse. It tells us in Ezekiel, the 13th chapter, the first to the ninth verse, dealing with the 16 that Yahweh hate, which was false witness speaking lies. It tells us in Ezekiel, the 13th chapter, the first verse, and it reads, And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesize against the prophets of Israel that prophesize and say, and say thy unto them that prophesied out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of Yahweh. Thus say Yahweh Elohim, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit. Take note, Israel. Many times you are following your own spirit and have not seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Ye have gone, ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither make up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of Yahweh. They have seen vanity, lying divinations, saying Yahweh said, and Yahweh has not sent them. And don't forget, we're supposed to be trying our way. We're supposed to be searching and trying our ways. If this fit us, Let's depart today. And it fits a lot of people. Let me read that one one more time. It says, they have seen vanity, the sixth verse of the 13th chapter of Ezekiel. They have seen vanity and lying divinations, saying Yahweh said, and Yahweh has not sent them. They have made others to hope that they would confirm the word, and that's exactly how it is. It ain't none of them confirming it. I tell them about Deuteronomy 27 26 every day. Cursed be he that confirms not all the words of the law and do them. But you keep telling me you under the covenant of the law, and I got to keep bringing up to you Deuteronomy 27 26. So if you is under the law, it sounds like you're cursed because you are not confirming every word nor doing them. It tells us in the seventh verse, Have ye not seen a vain vision, and have ye not spoken a lying divination, whereas ye say, Yahweh said it, I'll be it. I have not spoken. Therefore thus said Yahweh Elohim, dealing with the false witness and the lie, and speaking lies, it says, Therefore thus say Yahweh Elohim, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, say Yahweh Elohim. So we don't want to be a false witness, and we don't want to be a false witness speaking lies. It says, In my hand, shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh, Elohim. So he hate a false witness, one that speaks lies. And the last thing that is found in the seven things that he hate, even seven is an abomination, it tells us in Proverbs 6 chapter, and he that sows discord among brethren. And it is a lot of that going on. So let's find out what that denotes. And we've seen that same thing said in the 14th verse. The 14th verse of the 6th chapter denotes he that sold discord among brothers. For the 14th verse says, forwardness is in his heart. He devises mischief continually. Doing what? He sows 
discord. So the first example of what is found in the last part of the 19th verse is right here in Proverbs 6, 14. And one more that I would like to show before closing is found in Zechariah, the seventh chapter. Let us turn our scriptures to Zechariah, the seventh chapter. And I will close on this note and open up for comments and questions. Zechariah, the seventh chapter. For it tells us in Zechariah, the seventh chapter, And I would like to read the 8th to the 10th verse to allow us to know we are never to sow discord among our brothers and sisters and to allow you to know and never forget that this is one of uh, one of the seven uh, things that Yahweh hate. And note, they said seven was even an abomination. Well, this is the seventh, sowing discord among your brother. And it tells us in Zechariah 7, the eighth verse to the tenth verse, and it reads, I'll just read the 8th verse to the 14th verse because this is sowing discord and the Almighty said even the 7 is an abomination. So we see in Zechariah, the 7th chapter, the 8th verse, and it starts off by saying, and the word of Yahweh came and to Zechariah saying, it says, the word of Yahweh came into Zechariah, excuse me, yes, Zechariah saying, we at the 10th verse, I mean, excuse me, we at the 9th verse of the 7th chapter of Zechariah. Thus speak Yahweh of hope, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow nor the fatherless, the stranger nor the poor, and let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. But they refuse. So they refuse. They continue to sow discord. They refuse to, hear, to hearken and pull away the shoulder and stop the ears that they should not hear. Yea, they made their hearts as an ornament stone, lest they should hear the law and the word which Yahweh of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from Yahweh of hosts. Therefore it is come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried. And I would not hear, say Yahweh of hosts. What a day. We have vowed to fear Yahweh and depart from evil. And we said we were going to try and search our ways and see if any of our ways mimic the things that he hates. And if they do, we're going to depart today. Well, here it says, therefore it shall come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hearken or hear, so they cried, and he would not hear, said Yahweh of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind among all the nations 
whom they knew not. Thus the land was desolate after them, that no man passed through nor returned, for they laid the pleasant land desolate. So it allows us to know that Yahweh is truly against any that sow discord among their brethren to the intent that they had to be scattered into all the nations. And it allows us to know, especially once we have understood what these seven things is and how they offend our Creator, that we should never do them. We should depart from evil. We should fear Yahweh and depart from the seven things he hates. I will end this presentation by saying hallelujah, hallelujah, and open up for comments and questions. Is there any or questions dealing with the presentation matter, fear Yahweh, and depart from the seven things he hates? Is there any comments or questions? Please give us your name and where you're from before you make your comment and question. Two minutes per person. This is Brother Gerson from Michigan. Shalom, shalom. How you doing, brother? Shalom, my brother. All right, shalom. and I just want to say shalom. And I just want to say again a wonderful message. Really appreciate the meat. Uh, this substance, as as usually, uh, it's done. This fashion of uh, explaining, and uh, not only just pointing things out, but taking us around to be able to see what thus saith Yahweh and what it means by the examples of the prophets and his kings and his princes and the people of Israel. And I just want to say I'm grateful to be a part of it, uh, as well as my son and others. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother, for your service. Hallelujah. And thank you for lending the ear that you may hear. Hallelujah. Is there any Hallelujah. other comments or questions? Is there any other comments or questions? For we should all know and understand. Okay. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Shalom, shalom, my brother Yahushua from Virginia. Shalom, my brother. Um, I would like to say shalom. Yes, I'd like to say hello, yeah. Excellent um, presentation and pointing out the fear of the Most High, pointing out the things that he hates, pointing out the examples that's written right there before us. Fearing the most high, depart from evil, the things that he hates, we're understanding those very things that he hates because the same spirit in those that will have that understanding will not do anything to go against what he has said because that fear is embedded in them to know to honor the most high and not to go against all that he has said um those several examples you know Excellent examples. One, to show those that was not under the covenant of the law how they fear the Most High departed from evil. Job, for example, Noah, and several many other places that show that they was not taught. They didn't have the covenant of the law because it wasn't no covenant of the law. But the fact that they cared and a skewed evil, and it was counted to them as righteousness, counted to them as 
being perfect and obedient to the Most High. So when this court, false, being a false witness, um, having a proud look, being stubborn, or whatever is a form of witchcraft, as stated in uh, First Samuel. When they do these things, they have not the spirit or the fear of Most High, and they will continue to do those things without the understanding. One of the key points to mention, because they was taught by man, so their fear of the Most High came by way of man, and not them being sat down humble and spending that time searching his word, going through his word, establishing that fear, but the spirit upon them will allow them to confirm as they are reading. And many don't read. They rather hear from man to confirm and to take their side on many levels. And that is not fair. The fear of the Most High will keep that person planted, solid, unmovable, like a tree by the water side, as said. That spirit will allow them to not question any of his word because he will confirm his word. How can two walk together except they be agreed? And that's with the Most High. You got to first be in agreement with the Most High, but that comes by way of fear, not by learning the, the commandments or the covenant, the law, but the fear is the first and most important thing. That is the seed to walking and having that understanding because I give an example, one of the things that you brought up, how many run to different books. Now, when I was in my, you know, sitting down and learning and seeking the most high about his word and said, I'm going to only trust you. I don't want to hear from man. So he set me on that course. And as I was learning from the most high, not from man, men would then send coming with other books to bring to me but the Most High kept me from it. And one of those books came later on, which was the book of Enoch. People were talking about it. It sounded so good. I said, okay, I'm going to go and check it out. I'm going to go ahead. I didn't get to it, but I'm going to go ahead and look into it. But then the Most High stopped me in my tracks and said, what did I give to Moses? And I paused and said, oh, shoot. The law and the covenant. So why I need to go anywhere else? So he kept me grounded strictly with him, not leaning to the right or the left or to anyone, but trusting wholeheartedly in him due to the fear put upon me to do so. And I just want to say, you brought up many great points and examples, and there's a many, there's many more. But again, this still comes back down to being rooted and learning the fear of the Most High and trusting. If you say you fear the Most High, you will trust him because that was established. So I just want to share that. And um, excellent, excellent, my brother. And you brought up many great, excellent points. And, yes, it's a lot of that going on as we speak. So, again, hello, y'all. Shalom, my brother. Yes. Hallelujah, and that's very wisely spoken, and you're absolutely correct. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of all those things. If you want wisdom, if you want knowledge, if you want the protection of Yahweh, if you want to be on his path, if you want to walk with him, you must fear him. The commandments and and the uh, uh, statutes, the judgments, and all those things are told to you in instruction. And if you kept those instructions, it is a sign that you fear Yahweh. So if the Almighty said, I want you to go up 
to the place that I place my name tomorrow and uh, or, or on the first day. And then he came back and said, well, I don't want you to do that. I want you to do it. Come on the second day. You must come on the second day to, to be established as one that fear Yahweh. Because if you follow all the instructions, you are walking with Yahweh. If you follow all the instructions, you are perfect in the eyes of Yahweh. Yahweh took all the blessings from Job and let the adversary tempt him. He could, he, the adversary can do whatever he want to do. So the adversary about to turn his life upside down to prove that this man really loved and feared me. Because if he didn't fear me, he was going to give in to the adversary. He's going to read other books. He's going to believe the rumors and everything if he don't fear me. And Joe passed the test. So that was very wisely spoken, brother. You're absolutely right. We can go throughout the scripture, and it will constantly tell you that the fear of Yahweh is the principal thing. The scripture says the fear of Yahweh or or the the wisdom of Yahweh is the principal thing. Well, what did the scripture say? How do one get fear? I mean, how do one get wisdom? How do one get knowledge? How do one get understanding? By the fear of Yahweh. So the fear of Yahweh is the principle of all those great things that we are to do in obedience. And you ain't going to do it without the fear. It is proven. That's why the whole nation is kicked out the land today. So it is proven. You're not going to do it without fearing. Great comment, my brother. Is there any other comments or questions? Shalom, shalom, my brother. I just want to say beautiful presentation, as usual, very thorough presentation. And I pray, I hope I hope everybody can uh, start listening to these presentations, brother, because there is no one teaching like this. There is no, I was on Facebook a couple of years before you, and I was searching. There is no one teaching like this. So I just want to say how y'all for just being able to receive these messages. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And and I have heard those things, and you and several other people kept asking me to get on social media because y'all was already on there, and y'all was already talking to many people and having lengthy conversations with people. And as you stated, wasn't nobody really on there teaching the way we teach. And even though uh, we start to hear Many of the people quote the teachings that we are taught. Many of them were under us. They might not be under us today, but they were. And they got much of their information by way of their brother Samuel. So that is absolutely true. And the almighty mercy endures forever. So we just talking about the current situation. We're not talking about what Yahweh can do and what he will do. Many of us was in, found ourselves in the congregation of the dead, but he brought us out. And it wasn't based on us talking on social media or nothing like that. It's based on being chose. You are chose to be let out of the congregation of the dead. Just like the Almighty can choose to give you a few more years to live, or he can kill you tonight if he want to. You are chose by his loving kindness and his mercy. And as it state, and as I have stated, wisdom is a spirit. So if you got that wisdom today, Yahweh chose you to give you that wisdom. Don't forget where you come from. We were in the congregation of the dead. We was being robbed. We was being lied to. We was given half truths. We were taught to follow up the man that supposed to have been smart and not Yahweh. And Yahweh saved us out of those bird cages. Is there any other comments or questions? Hallelujah. This is Deborah in Virginia. Praise the mighty Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Shalom. Shalom. Excellent class. A lot of good points. So many good points. Uh, Praise the Most High for what you just said as well. Spirit of Most High being the beginning of wisdom. And, um, you know, a lot of times you can see that, you know, someone doesn't have wisdom by the things that they're doing um, or they not they don't fear the most high because they're not using wisdom in the way they conduct themselves. And just like what you said on the beginning, very encouraging um, discussion about Job. Um, Job was, uh, his integrity was tried um, without cause. I mean, this was brought against him without cause. It wasn't because he had had did one of the things that the Most High hated, um, and these things were not were were brought against him because he did something wrong. This said um, in the second chapter and third verse, um, they sought to destroy him without cause. So, and I, I like um, the discussion you said about being perfect. Um, it's something I say uh, to the children a lot, and I say, period, and our and our and our home is that, you know, the Most High told us to be perfect as he is. And and I was in a uh, group discussion recently, uh, well, a um, video chat with some brothers and sisters, and they were talking about the word perfect and how another word was associated with it, which is diligent. And and when they said the word, it was it was very profound to me because, when you fear the most high, you use diligence in your actions, diligence in the things that you do uh, to show that fear. Um, and with the fear, you, you're going to get the wisdom that's going to also help you with that diligence. But, you know, if if you say, which many of our people say um, with their lips, that they love the most high or that they fear the most high, but their ways, uh, when you examine their actions, is far from him. Um, when you look at the nine things, um, oh, it was a very good coverage on, and, but brief, brief coverage of the the nine things. And um, I did have a couple questions. Let's see. Um, but first, I, I wanted to... Um, say I agree with the things that you brought out, and I definitely confirm those things. The um, shedding the innocent blood, the lying tongue, um, the false witness, a lot of that goes on amongst Israel because, for one thing, we don't have righteous judges, and people take things, you know, into their own mind and their own thoughts. Instead of, uh, you know, holding it under the microscope of the Most High's word. Um, And so, therefore, they're not speaking the truth. Just like you brought out about the tithes. You know, I'm I'm really upset about all the tithes that I've paid over the years to the churches and to the camps. And that's definitely lying tongues. That's, That's a lot of these things could fall under the same categories. Lying tongues, sowing discord, not speaking the truth. When you're telling your brothers or sisters to tithe, um, then not only were they telling us to tithe, they were also saying you had to pay all this money just to go to a feast day that we weren't even supposed to be doing in this defiled land. So there was a lot of uh, lying tongue going on, but also lying one to another. Um, is definitely a way to show that there's a lack of fear of the Most High because that's something the Most High told us not to be deceitful one to another because that's just, that's not of the spirit of, of the fear of the Most High. And when you do that, you're also sowing discord. And a lot of times the sowing of discord is when you lack the wisdom. Because, again, you don't fear the most high, so there is no wisdom to keep you from sowing discord. And, again, it it all goes back to me. It goes back to the diligence. This fearing the most high is something that I consider you have to do 
every day, all day, at all times. And it, the Most High doesn't make excuses for us to, to not do that at all times. Yes, we stumble and we fall, but that that's when the proud look comes in, when you, you can't repent, you don't. You know, you don't change your ways and correct yourself in doing that. But this is definitely some good teaching. I appreciate all the things that were brought out. Um, we took notes, so we're definitely going to go back over this. Um, praise the mighty God. Hallelujah. That was very Hallelujah. widely spoken. I don't know the last. I know how it'd be same way with me. It'd be so much in my mind and heart. But the last part, you said it was going to be a question, and I didn't really get the question. I didn't oh, really get oh, it. Okay. You you, you <laughs> went on and, and filled. You really probably filled out the question. <laughs> you probably told, gave an answer because that's how it be so much sometimes with that spirit be on us and all this information. But I heard <laughs> everything you said, and I truly agree. Uh, and uh, due diligence and all that is great. Uh, uh, even though we don't find that, but we, it, it, diligence is what it means. But the difference between our fathers, and don't forget what we're doing, and don't forget what I said about two or three times in this presentation. I used Lamentation 3 and 40, and I said, let us search and try our ways today. And if we are doing any of these things that we're about to bring up, let's stop today. Ain't that what I said? Hallelujah. And the reason I said that, because I know that our fathers were taught to fear Yahweh. See, we just now learning. We searching today. And before we got into the, the great seven things that he hate, I took everybody to Amos, the eighth chapter, to let everybody know that we, we among a famine. And the famine that we're among is not hearing of the true words of Yah. So if we are among the famine, how in the heck, I'm talking about male, female, how in the heck do we really have all the fear of Yahweh that we need? Because we're learning. We're learning. And we done vows today to drop. Whatever we find out that we've been doing evil that Yahweh hates. We vows that today. At least I did. We have vows to drop whatever we find out that we're doing evil today. We read it. We studied it. And if any of those things fit our shoe or our foot, we're going to take that shoe off. So we're learning to fear Yahweh. And we're going to keep learning to fear Yahweh until we come to that sound wisdom. See, there's wisdom. And then there's sound wisdom, like you saying diligence. Well, if we keep the diligence up, we're going to make it to the sound wisdom. Right now, we just got a little wisdom based on our searching of the words of Yah. So I agree with you, sister. And we all need more work. We all need more practice. We all need uh, the almighty mercy to give us the strength to be the men and women he wants us to be on this earth. Yes. I think yeah. I remember the question. <laughs> Uh, uh, the question, I, I kind of remind, I remember the question as you were speaking. Um, so a part of uh, fearing the most high doesn't, I mean, what, that includes the part from evil, right? And also, um, it, so if you, if you, let's say if you find yourself around brothers and sisters that are not showing for the fear of the most high, um, and you depart from them, you're showing the fear of the Most High because you don't want to find yourself in that congregation of the dead. Basically, you don't want to find yourself um, in a situation where you are going to, you know, be in the, in the midst of the discord. You don't want to be in the midst of, of that which is not fearing the Most High. I, I, because yes, how can two walk together unless they agree? If you, you know, around people that ag agree with the New Testament, you and you constantly around them, that's not really showing the fear. Because what would that? What would you have to do with them? Because you're just going to be around them sowing discord. You know, I mean, should should we just depart from that? 
if we fear the, uh, most high, fear the most high? I just stated we all learning to fear the most high. And I yeah. think I stated in the presentation that they, this is our, this is the people current situation. And the reason why I said current is because Yahweh can always put that spirit on you. Yahweh can always, like, like, like it says in uh, the book of Lamentation, turn in the fifth chapter, turn us and we shall be turned. So Yahweh can always turn you. Now, the weakness of, of us, our carnal minds and our bodies, we might can't turn. We might don't have the strength to turn, even though somebody else might have did it. Th that don't mean you won't have that strength. That's what I stated mm -hmm. earlier. The whole congregation heard the law on Mount Sinai. But the Almighty said there was two people that had a different spirit. They all heard the same thing, but he, them two got different spirit. They fear mm -hmm. you more than everybody. So knowing that, the Almighty can always save us. We're going to be saved. So he can always save you and give you that spirit to fear him. We just don't know when he's going to give it to us. But I said when he do, don't neglect, no, don't neglect it. If that spirit fall on you, do not neglect that spirit for nobody. And that was the example used with um, Abraham. Abraham feared Yahweh so much that he would give up his only beloved son. That's how much he feared him. And Yahweh said, yeah, I see it. Don't put your hand on him. I see it. I see it. And I'm going to bless you. There it is. Hallelujah. There it is. Don't, don't underestimate Yah. You can underestimate me and other men and women all day. But the Almighty is not to be underestimated. He the one going to give us that spirit. It says he he give us the spirit, and when we die, they go into the grave, and the spirit go back to them who who gave it. The Almighty told Moses, hold on before you die. He said, what's going on, y'all? He said, I need you to give your spirit to your partner. I need you to put that spirit on Joshua. Yeah, so don't never underestimate the spirit. We're going to get it. Just keep trusting him. Keep fearing him. He's going to put it on you. His mercy done brought yeah. us this far. Brought yeah. us this far. We learning. We learning. Yes, ma'am. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. We all learning together. This teaching. Yeah, this teaching. I think the most high for you know, so we can do better and we can, you know, walk in that fear and understand Absolutely. what the scriptures are saying. Oh yeah. Absolutely, sister. And 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 and, and we also know. The Almighty said, when a man weighs or a woman weighs, please him, he'll make even their enemies at peace. So if he can make our enemies at peace, he can make our loved ones at peace, and he will. Just keep pleasing him. And the best way to please him is to fear him and don't do no evil. Period. Yeah. Yeah. That, that ain't hard. That's only it's hard to one. That's only hard to one that don't fear it. To not do mm -hmm. evil is not hard. We got people teaching that it's impossible to not do evil if you don't know the law and all that. No, fear Yahweh. And then you study the law and you won't do none of the things he hates. That's why we read it. But we're going to explain what fear is first. Then we're going to read what he hates. Mm -hmm. Keep examining yourself. Hallelujah. And everybody ain't going to have that spirit. I don't know. Last week we had 78 people. I don't know how many it is today yet. But everybody is not going to have that spirit. Just like I just said about Caleb and Joshua. Mm -hmm. So we all on here hearing the same words, but that don't mean you're going to leave with that spirit. Mm -hmm. Some of us going to go right back and do the same evil that we did yesterday. Some of us. And some of us going to pray for his strength that you fear him. Some of us. Mm. Great comments, sister. Is there any other comments or questions? I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, sir. Can you hear me, brother? Yes, sir. I I just want to piggyback off of that, and and then uh, and I know everybody already knows that sometimes uh, a verbal painting is is uh, good for encouragement and support, and um, 
and uh, my my dear mother told me a long time ago when I uh, wanted to know God, uh, and I used to hear the little voice of wisdom, of understanding, and you know I wouldn't. This is before any reading or anything. I'm not I'm not on a pride thing here, but it's it's the message, and uh, before I knew, you know. Uh, but I heard these little voices that would say, yeah, don't do that. And then every time I do it, I got in trouble. So I went to my mother and I said, Mama, how do I listen? It's like this little voice comes in my head in the form of, like, knowing that I shouldn't do a certain thing. And every time I don't listen, I get in trouble. God. I want to I wanna do the right thing. And my mother said, I said, it's it's hard. I don't even know what, 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 what's the steps. And she said, relax and pay attention to it when it comes. And when it comes, respond. And even though it may be very, very small voice, the first time you do it, the next time it's going to be stronger because that's how he rewards you. So every step you take in his direction, he makes that next step stronger louder and clearer. So as long as we are doing that, we are walking and turning toward him, regardless of the shortcomings and the mistakes we make along the way. Don't get caught up in that because his mercy is wrapped around us, and we are on his time, not our own time. Many people are rushing, thinking they got to study, they got to do this and that, like by a certain time and all that. Yahweh is in control. So relax. Enjoy the ride. Keep your eyes open and your heart on his word and meditate in it. And I think you're doing, you're doing good at that point. So that's just encouragement. That's not me telling anybody that's listening to anything. I'm just sharing this as, as my story. And that's all I want to say. Shalom. Shalom. And thank you for your testimony. I, I call yeah. it conscious. I call that little voice conscious. Your conscience. Yeah. That's what I call yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is there any other comments or questions? Great comments and great questions. I'm truly glad and, and thank the Almighty that y'all have lent the ear and y'all have truly heard. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah. If there isn't any other comments or questions, I'm not going to hold you any longer. And we can go ahead and end the presentation. Shalom. Shalom. One more. Come on, please. Shalom. Shalom. Yeah, who's on again? Uh, yes, sir. Just, you know, want to piggyback off of, just want to piggyback. And also with the uh, fear of the most high, you know, one that fears, it don't come by way of someone else dictating what to do or how to do some as the fear of the most high. The fear of the most high is something that man has no control over. Man is not in control of anything. But the most high is the one that's in control and like stated, the true has the spirit. And many people heard but did not understand nor receive the spirit. So many don't have that spirit, and many may think they have that spirit but don't have the understanding. That is something that the Most High will choose and have mercy upon whom he will have mercy and favor upon whom he will have favor, and it is up to him who he part that spirit on. Now, those that have that spirit, others may not even recognize it without having that spirit. Those that have that spirit will recognize those that same spirit, that fear, and that's an agreement with each other, walking in oh, yeah. and confirming all that he says. But one that's don't have that spirit, cannot understand that spirit. So they don't know about the spirit 
But those that have that fear, he reveals those things to them, and it keeps them humble and constantly drawn to him, and their desire is unto him because he put that fear and that spirit upon them that they don't have to question anything or search all around because he is their strength, their confidence, their wisdom, and he is the one who confirmed it all things. So, no, everybody don't have that spirit. Absolutely correct. So I just want to piggyback. Shalom, my brother. Shalom, my brother. And let me, let me state one more thing dealing with this, this, this sphere of Yahweh and dealing with individuals. We are individuals in darkness. We have been born in hell. Many of us have just started actually reading these words. Like as has been stated a couple of times in the Q and A, uh, we have been taught by man. Don't we don't read the book? We just go what he said, say he sung to us like he was Luther Vandross, and then we leave and do our own thing. Well, that is not necessarily represent the fear of Yahweh. And I just want to use this Proverbs 31. I want to use this virtuous woman as a model, not just a model for women, but a model for men, if they truly fear Yahweh. See, a virtuous woman is a gift from Yahweh. A wife is a gift from Yahweh. Now, hold on, though. To get a gift, you're supposed to be doing something good. That's, that's before deep in the relationship. I'm just saying the initial gift, the wife is a gift. So the Almighty gave a man a wife. The Almighty already seen the man. He already seen the man and know what the man going through. So I give the man a gift. And sometimes the, the gift is known as a helpmate. I give the man a gift. Well, I can take that gift away from that man if his ways don't please me. So we're talking about fearing Yahweh. So, and it's a two-way street. The fear of Yahweh is not just for women. The fear of Yahweh is for men and women. It is a two-way street. And as I stated, a wife is a gift. Now, note that the gift is being given to somebody. And most times, especially when we talk about blessings and things like that, that gift is given based on your obedience based on your righteousness, but yeah. I can take the gift away. If I do, like it says in the book of Jeremiah, if I tell them that I'm going to deliver them and then they do evil, I might repent on deliver them. Same way with the gift. I done gave you the gift. Now you're doing evil. So I don't make the gift as good as it was when I first gave it to you. Same way with a woman. With the woman being the gift. Well, the woman being the gift wind up being a helpmate. And if you truly fear Yahweh, I don't care how much helping you do. It ain't they don't say a helpmate fifty fifty. It don't say a helpmate seventy thirty. It says a helpmate. So no matter how much helping you do, you can't use that against the person that you are given to. You are to continue to be that helpmate. If he fuck, if he mess up, that's on him. The Almighty will take you away from him. But he ain't going to take you away from him if you determine what he doing. And let me figure this out, and let me explain it with these words. It says in Proverbs 31, it says, Who can find a virtuous woman? Let you know that they are Rare. For her price is far above rubies. Well, what else did the Almighty say far above rubies? Wisdom. 
which come by way of fear. And then it says, with this virtuous woman, and it just, no, virtuous woman. I'm getting to another point. I'm going greater than a virtuous woman. If y'all just bear with me, it says, the heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall not have no need of spawn. She, the virtuous woman, if the man mess up and you got a finger to point at him, let him mess up. Yahweh going to point the finger at him. Don't you do nothing to make Yahweh point the finger at you too. Thus it reads, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. And we just talk. Fear Yahweh and depart from the seven things he hates, which denotes evil. But this woman that truly fear Yahweh, she's not going to do evil to her husband. I don't care how much he messed up. Because she knows that the Almighty see all, and the Almighty going to take care of all. The Almighty is not with wicked, with wickedness. I don't care if it's the man or not. He is not with wickedness nor evil. So he's going to do what is right. And we read that dealing with the conclusion. For the Almighty said he was going to judge every man according to his works. If they good, or if they are evil. So we got the judge. We ain't got to worry about that. Dealing with our wives or our husbands. And then it reads. And the. The 26th verse. She opened her mouth with wisdom. Wisdom is not cussing. Lying, none of that. Matter of fact, when I do want to cuss you out, I got enough wisdom to go on the rooftop just because I fear him. If I, if I didn't fear him, I'd probably cuss you out. I'd probably put my hand on you because I have not learned the fear of Yahweh. And I don't fear Yahweh to that, agree, to that degree where... I ain't cussing you out or I'm putting my hands on you. Same with the woman. You got some women that beating up some of these guys now. Don't get it twisted. And cussing them out like dogs. But not so with the woman that fear Yahweh nor the man. And it says also in the 29th verse. Many daughters have done virtuously. What? Yeah. You know the old saying, what, what you won't do for your husband, another person to do. Or what you won't do for your wife, another person would do. Well, the scripture says many have done virtuously. There's many women and men out here are women dealing with this because it's dealing with a virtuous woman. There are many virtuous women out here. That's done virtuously. They look good, and they'll do just about anything for you. But that is not the woman Yahweh is talking about. For it tells us, many daughters have done virtuously, but thy exceeds them all. Favor is deceitful. And note, it says, thy exceeds them all. And you got to have in your mind, how, how is Yahweh labeling this one type of woman exceeding all the other virtuous uh, women or the virtuous things that women have done? And it tells us, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that fear Yahweh, it don't say she might be praised. It don't say that her husband going to have the power to, to shine her where he ain't going to give her no credit, no respect. Not, no, it lets us know, especially if you fear him. For if you fear him, then you're going to trust these words. And these words says favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman 
that fear Yahweh, she shall be praised. Now, she might be praised. She gonna be praised. And she is better than any woman that can do a favor for you or any woman that look better than her. She is the best. Why? Because she fear Yahweh. And she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own. Look what supposed to praise you. Look how you're going to get praised by your own works. So don't worry about if the man ain't doing what you think he should do. And make sure what you think he should do is based on the fear of Yah. Make sure it's in this book. Don't worry if the woman uh, 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 can't give you this and can't give you that. Don't worry if the woman don't look like this girl or this woman. Be happy and believe and be a recipient of Yahweh's mercy because he has given you one that fear him. That is the greatest thing of all. And if you are one of those women, don't ever give up on your creator. And what do I mean by that? By showing discord or showing evil or any of those things towards your husband. Don't never let a man cause you to sin is what I'm saying. Don't never let, before I feared Yahweh, I would lie and all that. And once I got the learning to fear Yahweh, I said I would never allow a woman to have me lie. But that's before you had to fear. You didn't have to fear Yahweh, so you're thinking about an excuse to tell whoever you lied to. But once you get to fear Yahweh, you will never look for an excuse. Because you ain't going to lie. You're not going to let a woman nor a man, a man cause you to lie because you fear him. But before that, you was a lying son of a gun. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to use that to correlate uh, with our presentation. And it did because it even ended with she that fear Yahweh. She'll be praised. And that's what this whole presentation was about, fearing Yahweh. So I'm going to end on this note. Is there any comments that one would like to make to what I just stated? If not, we can go ahead and end the presentation. Let us all turn our Holy Scriptures to Psalms 130 and close. Psalms 130. Another day, we find ourselves hoping for redemption and salvation. And it tells us in Psalms 130, and it reads, Out of the depths have we cried unto thee, O Yahweh. Master, hear our voice. Let thy ear be attentive to the voice of our supplications. If thy Yahweh should mark iniquity, O Yahweh, who shall stand? Nobody. But there is forgiveness with thee that thy mayest be feared. Did y'all hear that? The Almighty is so great in loving kindness and mercy and forgiveness. It is so great. It is beyond human comprehension that you should fear him. That's how great it is. Beyond your comprehension. All you can do is fear this. We wait for Yahweh. Our soul does wait. And in his word do we hope. Our soul wait for Yahweh more than they that watch for the morning. We got some saying, thank Yahweh for another day. We got some that on telescopes looking at the moon and stars and the light. Well, we look and wait for Yahweh more than they that wait for the morning. We say, more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in Yahweh. 
For with Yahweh there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he alone shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Hallelujah, 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 and shalom, Israel. Hallelujah, shalom, family. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, shalom. 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 <laughs> oh, yo, stay safe.